All right. We are live. Back again. This time, another Candlekeep Mysteries uh, adventure, I should say. But this time, a special, very special crossover edition with my horror campaign, Supernatural 20. We are here. All right. So let's just... um. Let's just get right into this. Uh, we're going to introduce the group in, in just a moment. This is a very special crossover event, like I said. Um, Supernatural 20 is our horror-themed campaign. Every episode is generally, not generally, is a one-shot. Um, and we usually sample uh, one-shots from the community or old dungeon magazines that I've um, found uh, found and uh, brought to 5th edition. But uh, today we're playing a Candlekeep Mysteries adventure called Book of the Raven. And we are going to, for the first time, connect some sort of a storyline to Supernatural 20. This is actually groundbreaking, everybody. How do you feel about this? I'm yeah, very wait. excited and scared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so for the longest time, our Supernatural 20 game has always been disconnected, right? Every single adventure is its own thing. But now we're going to introduce a very special tie-in that will uh, affect the normal group. I do have half of you here, so let's go through introductions. We're going to start with Dobby and work our way to the right. Um, I should say Andrew. Andrew, go ahead. Tell me. Well, you already today. introduced me. Thanks. Uh, hey, guys. I'm Andrew. I'll be playing Dobby, the uh, wizard half-elf. Um, I'll be playing the same character as I am in Supernatural 20. That's right. And... Uh, if you recognize Andrew and Dobby, it's because he's been on the channel quite a few times. He has played Dobby in gnome form in Descent into Avernus. He's played Dobby in uh, evoker form in uh, Warhammer 40k players play D and D, and he's in our Supernatural 20 crew, as you can as you can tell. All right, now we're gonna head over to Michelle, another friendly face. Go ahead. Hello, I am Michelle, um, and my character is a deep gnome barbarian by the name of Bear. Um, Bear is in the Supernatural 20 campaign, um, and Bear is just a huge fan of Dobby based on Dobby's heroic escapades in the Descent into Avernus campaign. So Bear is just like Dobby's number one fan, cheerleader, and self-appointed personal bodyguard. That's right. And yes. and even though he's not a gnome anymore, you still have a, a great affinity for him. Oh, certainly. Yeah, no. It, Dobby is more than just a physical presence, you know? Like, he's, he's just a non-tangible entity at this point, which symbolizes essentially pure love from, right. from the perspective of Bear. Right. He, he is the way. He is the way. Yes, absolutely. May Dobby be with you. All right. And then we... Uh, Actually, so Stephanie is part of the Supernatural 20 crew. She plays the character Brom Bones. But today, Steph, who are you playing? Yeah, so um, I seem to have misplaced Brom this week. He's probably still at the pub um, after that knockout from the previous escapade that we did. Uh, so today I am playing a different member that has not been introduced yet. Her name is Ella. Um, this is her first time meeting Dobby and Bear, so I'm not sure how she's going to react to them in general. Um, but I'm kind of a higher ranking member of the guild that our Supernatural 20 players are in. So I'm very excited to kind of bring a new character and also I'm just terrified in general. So it'll be good. Yeah, and that's a good point there. You, you brought up our guild. So this is kind of the big tie-in. So for the longest time, we've had this like unnamed entity this guild that investigates supernatural activities and you were all you know individually as characters approached by this guild and brought on board because of your various specialties whether it's you know dobby being a uh, hero that saved baldur's gate and elturel or it's you know bear for being the most ferocious barbarian that uh you can get from the, the from the gnome kind uh, whatever it may be, your specialty was brought on by this guild. And uh, so today you are playing a higher up ranking member of the guild, a paladin of the Watchers. And you are going to be uh, leading the group into Candlekeep. Um, so let's explain why we're here today, shall we? Let's dive into Candlekeep. Yes. All right. 
Okay. The Book of the Raven, everybody. So, you as a group, the three of you, have been tasked with going to uh, Candlekeep, the great library, uh, to do some research. Dobby, even though you are perhaps newer to the guild, your expertise in extraplanar travel and lore, as well as the fact that you are a very well-renowned wizard and um, intellectual, you, you've been chosen to lead the research to investigate um, basically hidden planes or hidden hidden pocket dimensions. You don't know why, but the higher-ups have appointed Ella to be your uh, overseer of sorts on this mission. It's very standard. You're going to go to Candlekeep, use their resources, and then report your findings to Ella, and then head back to your central hub. Naturally, you chose Bear to accompany you, just in case um, you needed an extra hand. Although, Bear, you're probably spending most of your days, I would assume... Well, I guess you could decide, but when you're not by Dobby's um, uh, side, giving him help with carrying books, perhaps, you're at the hearth, the pub in the... Uh, in Candlekeep, where you can mingle and interact with some of the, some of the uh, sages there. Oh, excellent! But it's really a work trip, right? This is we're focused, and um, yeah. So, so Dobby, you've been searching for days now in Candlekeep, and we, as we said, you actually your guild has some sort of clout with Candlekeep. Maybe a favor was called in. Um, you've been given access to pretty much every resource available. In fact. Uh, you even have some sages on call to bring you more books or assist with any sort of research you're doing. So you've had people, you've been bossing people around. The only person bossing you around is Ella. Oh. Um, and Ella, so far after a few days, he really hasn't found all that much, especially um, because there just isn't that much written about these demi planes, these uh, pocket dimensions that are hidden from very powerful magic. So. What do you have to say to Dobby about his research? Um, I mean, if we haven't found anything in a couple of days, I don't know what we're paying you for, you know? <laughs> well, I just need some more time. You can't rush this kind of work. Everybody knows this magic is delicate. I, I understand that, but at the same time, I mean, uh, you haven't found anything yet? Like, nothing. There's nothing? Nope. Why don't you give me a uh, investigation check, Dobby? A nine. A nine. Whoops. There we go. For some reason, my uh, roll 20 is not showing me the chat feature here. I'm not sure why. Hmm. Strange. Well... Let's maybe reload this. Um, what was the total? Nine? Okay. Yeah, so unfortunately, you've been just coming up empty. I mean, you found, you know, you, you know the spell Plane Shift. In fact, that's how you got to Avernus. You know about other planes of existence. That's, that's well-researched. But some sort of hidden pocket dimension. The only thing you could really find is that folk tales or stories that recall certain events happening cattle being going missing uh, uh, where perhaps the situation wasn't as um, the you know maybe accounts were not the same as they were written so like farmers arguing about whether or not uh, it was some sort of wolf pack that took their crop their uh, their cattle or or you know something else so maybe monsters coming about too far from caverns but nothing that's really gonna definitively say how to find these planes if they do exist but most of them deal with backwoods farmers recalling strange events creeping fogs um moving mists but nothing concrete well i of course know it's magical there's no physical evidence left behind with these mysterious disappearances so right exactly so Dobby, one day you're working in the uh, you're working out in the courtyard, the courtyard of air, and it's a place where a lot of people circulate. But you felt like it was better to get out of the stuffy, the stuffy library and get some fresh air and do your research for the day. Um, do you have hockey with you? Of course, always. Okay. 
Um, is Hockey like by your side or roaming up in the air? Uh, he usually does his own thing until I need him. Okay, so he would be kind of floating above or doing whatever. Yeah. You, you don't have him next to you. No, he's not on my shoulder or anything like that. All right, then he would alert you that there's a another bird headed your way. A blackbird. Headed my way as if to maybe deliver a message. Maybe. Poop on your head. Who knows? <laughs> but he's giving well, you a heads case, up. I'll uh, be sure to cover my head with some cover. Yeah, so you kind of put your... The whatever book you're reading, you kind of shield your eyes. It's a bright sunny yeah. day. I don't threat. I don't sense any threat or anything, so I. I don't mind this bird approaching. No, no. This this bird actually is carrying something in its clutch, though. When it gets a little bit closer, you can tell it's a book. It flaps down, lands oh, right I, next to you. In fact. Yeah, I'll put my arm out to. Uh motion it to come closer so I can see what it's, what it's carrying. Yeah, so it lands on like a little bench area that you're sit seated at, and it drops the book and uh, kind of pecks at it and then you notice that the book has quite a few um, scratches and little indentations made by pecking of beaks. Hmm. Curious. Um, I'd like to take a, a look. Of it. Yeah, I'm going to show you a picture of it. And for those of you on the stream who are watching, I'm going to show it on as well. So there you go. All right. You examine it. Is it made of wood? Uh, no, it is. Uh, it's not. It's not made of wood. But the thin book bears no title. Um, not on the on the outside cover, uh, which is made of thin sheets of black oak. All right. It's made of black Ooh, oak. I, um... Have I ever heard of this book? Uh, a, a small, black, nameless book? No, definitely not. Uh, definitely not. But the binding is black wire. Uh, there's only 33 pages of yellowed, um, kind of wrinkled from moisture pages. So it's, it's it looks old. Your best guess would probably be that it's a couple of hundred years old. Um but without more examination and taking time to really look through it, it would be hard. Uh, and Bear is just headed over with lunch. Great timing, mm. Bear. I was getting hungry. Oh, I got the tastiest treats for us, Dobby. I'm so <laughs> glad we came here. What'd you bring, I Bear? Some, I got some rolls. I got lots of pastries. I like pastries. And I asked if they had any ham they had ham, Dobby. I cleared them out. You want some ham? Of course I do. Amazing. I'm gonna hand him like just a full like hunk, like a five pound just hunk of ham. I All did right, my so you, job. So you hand Dobby this big piece of ham. You got rolls. So you can make sandwiches out of it. Meanwhile, Ella is approaching with some more books and you see the two of them uh, with two birds also they're eating, they have the whole feast of ham spread out about them. What do you say when you approach? Um, hey guys, where's my invite? I, I thought we were cool. I, th I thought we were buddies. I got, I got my books. Who, Dobby, <sighs> Dobby who, who is this? Who invited her? <laughs> Ugh. Dobby, I'm uncomfortable. Ella, Can can't you see her? we're working here? You're distracting us. Hmm. See, so you're working on that ham. Of course. We need our energy. We have a lot of books to read. I don't know, guys. I, I don't know if we have time for a break now. I mean, hmm. Are you break. serious? Are you, do you see these ham sandwiches? I mean, do you have an extra one? Just... Oh, we have an extra okay. five. Just... Oh, yeah. Look. No, I like ham. You, you got me. I was so... just about to uh, sit down and take a look at this interesting new book that found its way to me. And with that, the, the, the raven with, with that, the Long raven story. is going to fly away. Um, not before I gave it a little bit of ham for its travels, right? It actually did not take any food that you offered it. What? That's rude. Yeah, yeah it declined the food. It kind of looked at your hand, but then flew away. All right. I'll make sure Hawkey keeps an eye on it as it flies away. Okay. Do you want him to follow it? No, no. Okay. Just... Uh, 
make sure it doesn't do anything tricky around the area. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, so you've got food, and Dobby, when you uh, say, I was just about to show you or read through this book, a, a piece of paper falls out from inside um, the cover. But I didn't open it. Yeah, it falls onto the floor. You face down, you pick it up, and it's clear that this is a map. I'm going to share this with you as well. And then I'm going to put it on stream as well. All right, there you go. So you can see. Um, you can read whatever you'd like from it. You can um, decide what you do with this map. But it does. it is titled Evil Beware. This way. Are you going on a trip? Is that what you're trying to show me? <laughs> no, this is the first time I'm seeing this as well. I don't know what to make of it. Yeah, Where so, are we on this map? It's a good question. Why don't you give me a investigation, or excuse me, a uh, yeah, I'll take either an intelligence investigation or perhaps even a insight check if you'd prefer. Another nine. Um, can, can I can I look as well since I'm looking? Oh at yeah, all of you can attempt this. Whatever you think is best for your character, insight or intelligence. Actually, to discern maybe the surroundings, I'd say survival. So, if you're looking just for surroundings, like where the, you might be located, I'd say survival. But if you're looking to see anything, gain any other um, insights from it, I would take insight. Maybe if I've heard of any of these places. Yes, exactly. Oh, I rolled a three, so um, looks like a map to me. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see there's a couple of pieces of writing on it. Um, ooh, Michelle, you rolled a one, so... None of you seem to have any clue of what's going on here. Great. Maybe, uh -huh. maybe hockey knows. <laughs> we're, just getting these, we're just getting these out of the way early, hopefully. Get them out of the way, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. My face, I'm like ears deep in ham. I don't know what's going on at this right. point. Bear's not really concerned. No. Um, but you can see there's a couple of different important pieces that you can uh, tell on this. Uh, first off, there's sort of like a, a little directions at the bottom, right? It says, follow the trail to the hand and horn past three tree hill over river worn to the worms mark worms like dragon in foggy moors west of there the treasure's yours so even with your insight of a nine or investigation of a nine whatever it was Dobby um, which is the highest this is clearly a treasure map um, based on that description and you feel like the location would probably be this place right here, based on the, uh, to the bottom left corner of the map, the most, I guess, southern, south southwestern point would be the location based on the titles of all of the markers. Well, so what do you, do you say, do? guys? This is interesting. It's the most interesting thing we found. We've been here quite a while. We could use a break. I guess, where did this come from again? A uh, little birdie <laughs> showed it to me. I like treasure. Yeah. I don't know, guys. Now, there is a 33 page book still. You do still have that. This was just like in the cover, kind of like placed in there. Oh, yeah. Can we look through the book? I guess yeah. Dobby read the book, so. I don't know. Yeah. Dobby, you can read the book. It's going to take some time. Although you are a fast reader, 33 pages, I'd say in about 15 minutes or so, you could probably read this. All right. Mm -hmm. um, All right. You can, the first thing you can tell by the book is that this was not, this is a firsthand account. It's a journal. It is, uh, it is not written by a master scribe or someone who's uh, practiced at writing books. Um, so that's, that's the first thing. Clearly, it was written by an unsteady hand. Um, second thing is that you can see that this tells a story of a anonymous author who falls off their horse and breaks their breaks her leg. Um, this unknown author writes that she was befriended by people called the Vistani. Now these Vistani, they're they're travelers, and they graciously nursed her back to health, and for months she 
kind of stayed with this group while she was getting better. Uh, throughout the uh, book, she describes about a dozen different people who are called Vistani. They are colorfully described. They wear colorful clothes. They have a, a flair to them. Uh, they uh, helped her by applying bandages and nursing the leg back to health. Um, you also learn that at one point in the book, towards the end, the author describes some rough roads, days of travel through impenetrable mist and thick forests, crackling fires on cold nights, wolves howling in the dead of night, and ravens pecking at the uh, roof of the wagon in the wee hours of the morning. At the very end, the author writes of being um, able to hob hobble about on crutches and describes the cheery mood of her benefactors as the Vistani caravan traveled down a winding mountain road to the gates of a tall and dark castle. The book ends with a description of the castle's dreadful countenance. The writing abruptly stops on the third to last page, suggesting that the book was snatched from the author's hands mid-sentence. Wow. So you don't know much about who these people are, mm -hmm. although you may have heard the term Vistani before. You can give yeah, me a I was just history if check if you'd like. Yes, please. Um, a 13. Yeah, you don't know much. Um, you do hear people talk about these people uh, that they're traders travelers um and they sounded friendly they do sound very friendly yes and what you've heard of them before is that they uh they seem to have like sort of like a, a good luck surrounding them that's all you've heard about them before you probably never encountered anyone named that goes by that that term vistani um but you've you've heard the term before um, how old does this book look? Was it like fresh a, ink kind a of? A couple? Thing? No, no. It looks like it might be a couple hundred years old. Oh. Yep. Um, it's hard to tell. There's no date written. There's again no title. Um, you don't know where this book came from. Hmm. And it didn't really give us any hints on. Uh where any of these places are located. No, but the one piece that did seem to strike you as um, familiar was the fact that there were accounts of impenetrable mists in thick forests, crackling fires on cold nights, howls of wolves in the dead of night, all things that you've read about in those accounts of farmers claiming that their cattle and, and uh, livestock have gone missing. Oh, so a clue, a clue. Wait a minute, guys. This could be linked to our disappearances, linked to our magic realms. This could be what we've been looking for. Okay, so, well, we haven't I think, had it. I think Bear like... just realized all the ham was finished. The ham is done now. <laughs> there is no more ham. So where are we going? What are we doing, Dobby? Following you to the end, man. I say we follow this map. The only problem whoever, whoever wrote it is clearly describing what we've been hearing. Yeah, the only problem is you don't know where this map would, would start for you. Um, Is my librarian friend that was here many years ago still around? Maybe she could help us out. I know she's mm. very knowledgeable. Sylvira? Yes, that's her. Mm. Yes, a powerful archmage um, of Candlekeep. Sylvira Savakis is, is still here, and if you want to call in a favor, you could. I would. I'm sure she will remember us. Well, you or do myself. look a bit different. You do look a bit different, but uh, but when she hears the name Dobby... Right. There's she does, not many uh, travelers that go looking for a way into Avernus. I'm sure she'll remember us. She will. She will host you and and uh, and uh, say that you do look like you've maybe gained a few inches. <laughs> yeah. I'm in, Height wise. Uh, I've been doing my stretches. Yes. So it's a 
It's interesting you come to ask me for help, Dobby. Sylvira is a tiefling um, uh, wizard. She has a quasit familiar who you remember. The uh, the quasit's a little mischievous, and he's in the background holding up you know beakers and stuff, whatever tests she's been doing. So he he's playing around with some items in the background, but she will tell you that uh, it's funny that you came to see me about traveling to Avernus. Now you are looking for hidden planes of existence. What what might you be trying to find? Well, just that. We've been having some mysterious disappearances lately, and we're investigating the source. We have some reason to believe that it could be magical related. Well, I can tell you that the the Witch Way, it's an old uh, path out into the countryside. It may be a week's travel from here. I did not know of this location specifically, but um, all of these other markings seem to be the same. The Scorch of the Red Worm, that volcano, the Three Tree Hill, as it's been remembered in folklore. But uh, I can't say that I know exactly how to get to your final destination. But I could... Um, I could teleport you to the Witch Way. I think that would be an excellent start for us. Okay. So, again, the Witch Way is a, basically an out-of-date road. Really doesn't lead to much past the, uh, the small town that, that used to, to be at the end of the Witch Way. Um, it been long since abandoned, so um, she will do that for you. She'll, she'll transport you as far as she knows, because that would be the safest place. And then you'd have to go on the journey from there. You see Ella, and you said ham is a waste of time. I'm not sure what the ham has to do with it, but... The ham led to all of this. It's true. <laughs> Bear has only just yeah. realized who Sylvira is. Uh, so I, at this point, I'm going to be just doing kind of like like a lot of running around, like, ah! and then every so often I'm going to run up like over Dobby's shoulder and be like, no, is this seriously the Sylvira? Like from the stories? No. <laughs> Sorry. So that's happening in the background while you guys had your very serious conversation. Sorry, Ella. The closet mimics you and makes the same faces and hands to the face. and. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, Ella, good. do you seem pleased with this plan? You are in charge here. I, I am terrified by Bear's reaction, but I mean, this this is who I got. This is who I recruited. I refuse to back down and say that I picked wrong, so we're going to go with it. Okay. <laughs> it's my plan. Of course it's a good plan. Well, I mean, those yes. are some famous <laughs> last words there, Dobby. <laughs> Let's see. Might have to roll up some new roll uh, Supernatural 20 characters next time. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> All right, let's begin. So uh, we're going to expedite the travel here. Um, you get teleported by Sylvira from Candlekeep to the Witchway. Um, it takes you to uh, this small town. Uh, residents of the Witchway uh, abandoned the hamlet decades ago. In fact, all that remains are broken down wagons surrounded by rotted fences uh, and dilapidated structures. Fog shrouded farmsteads are overrun with wild pigs. So if you want more ham, you've got it. All right. But after uh, uh, maybe about maybe about three or four days of travel following the red path, hopping onto the blue path, you do end up passing all of these big markers like the hand of the horn the Tree Hill, the Wood Bridge, Scorch of the Red Worm, all of them seem to be accurate, although the map is not necessarily accurate distance-wise, it is accurate in landmarks. Um, which leads you to the southwest icon here, this chateau. All right, here we go. So you're approaching this place, um, it's getting dark, but it's still light out. So it's, it's before dusk. Um, you approach this, uh, this house, and you can see that it's, it's very uh, run down. It is a large home, definitely a wealthy family used to live here. 
It looks overrun. I'm going to switch the map now to bring you to the... Uh... Here we go. And I believe your characters are right here, and you can see kind of like the outline of the house. Am I correct? I am currently all black on my screen. Um, oh. I think so. I see some walls and steps. You're... Oh, you can't see, Steph? I cannot see. Oh, Sorry. I probably didn't give you lighting. Yep. There we go. Roll20 updated the lighting settings, so I'm going to... What about now? Oh, I can see me myself in the corner. Yes, Great. looking good. Okay, so you can see these are the front steps to this house, but there's quite a bit surrounding it, so if you'd like to maneuver your tokens, I can describe things to you as you approach. Um, yeah, I'll have uh, Hockey take a look from uh, the aerial perspective. Sure. So I guess the, uh, the first thing to note is that this... This home stands atop a high hill, uh, overlooking a fog-shrouded scrubland. It has brick walls, sturdy wooden doors, um, and uh, you can see there's a, actually a, a, a fence here, an iron fence, towards the southernmost side of the house that looks like there's some sort of overgrown garden or something like that. Lots of, lots of uh, overgrowth over here to the south. We really need to work on our timing, guys. I feel like we always get these places when it's getting dark out. No, it's still light. You got you got an hour at least of Man. sunlight. <laughs> Does anybody see anything? That does all just looks abandoned to me. Nothing. Hockey doesn't. Yeah, hockey I'm doesn't gonna, see anything. I'd like to investigate the garden a bit, um, just to see if I recognize any of these plants. Maybe see if. Uh, um, sure. See if I can see like how long these plants have been kind of overgrowing. I don't just to try to get some lay of the land a little bit better. Sure, give me a uh, a nature check. Oh, I think. Give me a moment here. My nature is not great, but I'm still gonna do it. We better we better follow her, bear. We don't want to get blamed for leaving her behind. You got a nine. Um. Yeah, nothing out of the ordinary for the region in terms of uh, plant life. But one thing you do notice when you get close to this iron fence here is that there's tombstones. And I can I think I shared a picture with you just now. You can see the tombstones uh, sitting in this clearly now a overrun graveyard. Hmm. Bear, get over here. It's getting creepy. Um, do I recognize any of the names in the graveyard? Anything? Um... You can read them, yes. Um, none none that you recognize. However, the, the four prominent ones say Baron Brantifax, husband, father, hunter, and then in a quote, let no man stand above another. Uh, let me just actually read the description of this graveyard. A seven foot tall wrought iron fence encloses a small graveyard south of the chalet. Set into the north side of the enclosure is a gate with the name Brantifax worked into the arch above it. In the yard are four graves, each marked with an engraved headstone. So the first one says, Baron Brantifax, husband, father, hunter, let no man stand above another. The second tombstone reads, Brorn, hound of Brantifax, faithful to the end. The sec a third says, Heluth, our pride and joy, lost too soon. And the last to, uh, stone reads, uh, Sylphine, beloved daughter, may she find peace at last. Mm. <sighs> hey, you guys, why are, why are we staring at a graveyard? Just making sure nothing moves. Okay. <laughs> good point. Good point. Anything um, you want to do here? I think, like, as a paladin, I'd kind of pay some respects to. I mean, I probably wouldn't go into the graveyard, but at least at the at the gate. Um, okay. You say some prayer. I think probably turn around. Um, I guess go through the front door, guys. What do you think? Um, 
Well, since this is supposedly what we're looking for, for magical sources, I want to go ahead and start casting Detect Magic, just in case. Okay. All right, so you'll uh, spend... Is it going to be a regular spell or casting as a ritual? Ritual. Okay, so then uh, you're going to uh, need ten minutes or so, but you're going to start to recite your spell. All right, so heading over back to the front door, um, you can you can look at the door, and it definitely looks like you could open it. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell if it's locked or anything until you try. How do you want to approach? The door by the steps? Yeah, the, it, was, it looks like the front door here. On the Ella, east. you're the boss. You go first. Go ahead. So it's the front door there. Um, I'm going to make a quick like, insight investigation check just because I have gotten hit by a trap door before. Um, Search the door, correct? Yeah, I mean, she's just going to check the door for any traps, see if she can see anything. I've been burned before. So, um, but more of a quick one because uh, (laughs) it is getting kind of darker out. I don't really want to be outside when it gets dark out um, because of these rolling fogs and things that are happening. Sure. Go ahead. Give me a, give me a perception check to like look for something on the floor or the door handle, something like that. Yeah. I rolled um, a 15. Oh, great. Yeah. 15 is, is a good, you check the door. And uh, it doesn't seem like it's locked. Doesn't seem like it's trapped. You jiggle the handle. Seems to be good to go. Okay. Um. Then I knock. I just knock on the door. Then I mean, okay. I don't know if I did that before. I'm sorry. Um. But I knock now, at least. Oh yeah, definitely. Doesn't look like there's um. Uh, anyone home? So you knock and you get no response. Then I'm gonna open the door. Okay. The door opens into a coat room. Uh, The rusty iron hooks line the walls of this entrance foyer. Hanging from two of these hooks are a shovel and a rake. Dusty cloak is draped over a hook next to a round-topped door to the south wall. So you can see there's a door here in the south. There's a door to the west. And in this room, there are... uh, There's one cloak... On a hook, and then a shovel and a rake. Do they look um, recently used? They do look dirty, yes. Probably within the last few days. Okay. We got someone must be here. Um, and yeah. I'm backtracking a bit. We didn't see any light coming from any of the windows or anything, did we? No, it wasn't wasn't dark yet, but... Oh, uh, right. There were no, there was no like light sources being emitting light from the rooms. Did we notice any freshly turned up dirt outside? You know, you didn't really investigate. You kind of saw from the, from the fence. You didn't go into the graveyard. Um, just, just because I'm seeing this fresh dirt on the shovels, I'm gonna have Hawkey go take a quick look, see if he sees any fresh dirt anywhere. Yeah, he does. When he swoops down and takes a good look in the in the graveyard the tomb of or excuse me the uh, plot of sylphine looks like it's got fresh dirt turned up on it like it was dug up or yeah. freshly buried freshly buried covered yeah not no, there's no like mounds of dirt it just looks like the ground has been disturbed hmm. hey guys looks like these shovels were used in the graveyard recently the past couple days okay um yeah well I, I i would like to at at that point just be like dobby stand back i have to okay. be in front of you at all times you and i'm go just ahead. gonna like i'm gonna flatten dobby against the wall with my back to him so <laughs> that like anything approaching would have to get through me first I that's right around like this that's that's good protector style mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i can't let my precious dobby get hurt having trouble breathing <laughs> it's for your own good yeah listen um, you brought bear along for a reason dobby mm-hmm. uh i i definitely just shake my head 
I get it. I get the relationship now because we've been traveling for a while, so like, this all seems normal-ish. Uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna say, hey, look, this guy, whoever is here, buried something with a shovel and a rake. I doubt we're dealing with complete degenerates here. Let's keep moving. <laughs> I'm gonna knock and um, like say hello, kind of go. I think to the to the west. So that I, looks like it's going to go to the another door. Sure. Um, and necromancy no curiosity was definitely intrigued. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. This There seems to be something going on here, whether it's super sinister or not, yet to be determined. The door uh, to the west, no answer, and it opens easily. It's not locked. Okay. It opens into a, uh, a den of sorts. Light enters the spacious room through a bulge in the north wall where cracked and broken windows look out over a foggy veil. There are dusty sheets that cover most of the room's furnishings. Cobwebs stretch between the antlers, wolf heads, and other hunting trophies that are mounted on the walls above the wainscoting. A pale rectangle above the large fireplace suggests that a picture or a mirror once hung here. Uh, there is obviously a staircase um, that goes up, and there's a uh, door ajar to the south. Any broken glass or anything on the floor? Maybe could have fell. Uh, yes, by the windows. Yeah, it looks like there's broken glass for sure. Anybody want to call out? See, see if anybody's uh, home? There's a fog coming in. Look like or just like haunty looking. Fog. There is definitely a fog, yes. Uh, below You're on top of the hill, so all the fog is below you. You were kind of traveling um, through it. It wasn't that thick, but you could see that it, it was developing. Okay. Um, I quick look at, at Dobbing Bear. You closed the door, right? No. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, we don't do doors back in, like, where I come from underground. Lucky needs a way in just in case I need him. Okay, if that's if that's the way we roll, I mean, okay. Uh, <laughs> I do call out. <laughs> um, I do call out. Uh, like uh, I do that kind of when I was walking through the west door. I kind of knock and like say hello, hello. Um, just looking. We come in peace. I think. <laughs> like, there is no response, but when you are listening for a response, you do hear creaking of floorboards above you. Something, something relatively heavy, is being dragged across the floor. Sounds like it's coming from the room that you're standing under. Okay. Doesn't anybody else hear that? I do. Uh, I do. Uh, I'm going to... I think we should check that out before we do anything else. I mean, there must be something up there. We good? Okay. You're the boss. Um. You first. I guess I. <laughs> Actually, um, before we do that, I'm. I just want to peek around the corner to see if there's another room or just something else, just before we run up the stairs. Sure. So there's two other exits from this room, both to the south. There's a hallway to the southwest. And directly south, there's another room where the door is ajar. Okay. I just like to know all my exits. It's like sure. when I'm in one of those moving picture places and they show me where all the exits are. Yeah. <laughs> Move your characters and I'll tell you what you see. Um, I go down. Oh, I go to the probably the ajar room first. Okay. So you, I see bears heading down the hallway to the southwest and the two other characters are headed to the ajar door. So I'll do the, the door first. So the door that was uh, ajar leads to a kitchen area. The ghostly scent of meals uh, in the from the past still haunts this kitchen, which is a strange description to give in a read-aloud text. Forever trapped in the wood of its tables, the soot in its hearth, the grime in its pots, many of which hung from hooks about the room. Almost everything you would expect to see in a kitchen of this size can be found here, including dish-filled cupboards, 
cleaning supplies, and cooking utensils. Mice scurry across the floor, trying their best to avoid you. Okay. Anything out of the ordinary in there? Um, I give my, me a. I my head in. Give me a quick perception check, Dobby. Perception. A thirteen. Um, the one thing you notice is that there are quite a bit of uh, there are quite a bit of pots and pans and stuff like that that look like they've been used sitting on the countertops. Mm -hmm. Freshly used garden equipment. Freshly used kitchen equipment. Hey guys, definitely somebody here. Yeah, which is strange because it's not just a ghostly scent. It's a real scent. And Bear, you were headed to the west hallway, right? Yes, I, I'm just kind of like peeking around the corner. I just want to see as much as I can while yep. kind of staying in the same place. You do see a door which you assume leads to the kitchen area. And what you can reveal from your position, maybe about 10 feet away from the opening of the circular room, is that it's a dining room. The circular chamber at the base of this tower uh, contains a large oak dining table. It's surrounded by six high back chairs carved with images of stags. Suspended above the table is a gaudy chandelier tied off with ropes. Puddles of water on the flagstone floor are now the result of moisture seeping in through uh, three narrow broken windows um, that are evenly spaced around the tower wall. There's also a fireplace set into the wall. So, yep, that's the room. So you can see the windows here and here. One to the north, one to the southwest. And this is a tower, right? So, mm -hmm. basically um, you're on the first floor of this tower. Has the fireplace been used? It does have black soot in it. So it could have can been I, used recently, too. Can I poke the soot to see if it feels warm to the touch? Uh, it doesn't feel warm, but it definitely could have been used recently, within the last few days. Mm -hmm. okay. I think we should check out upstairs, guys. Yeah, I think we should. Yeah, we'll go upstairs. I heard something going on. Okay. I would go first. It looks like there's a, a door at the top of the stairs. I wouldn't have, I really wouldn't have my sword out, but I'd have my shield at least, kind of. Sure. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, so. I'm gonna, I'll cast Mage Armor on myself, just since we heard something going on up there. Sure. As you're walking up the steps, creaking along, especially because, Steph, you're in full plate armor, right? So yeah. you're making, you know, the, the floorboards are <laughs> uh, trembling beneath yeah. each step. No stealth checks here. <laughs> no stealth checks, right. <laughs> Um, Sounds either like we're way, you've been pots and pans on the way up. Yeah, <laughs> just like <laughs> banging on some music, <laughs> making some music as you're way up there. Um, but you've been very, you've been entering this. Your this is somebody's house, right? So you don't know. You've been announcing your presence. There's no, there's no secret. Um, Not an animal here. Right, <laughs> right. You get about, you get almost the way to all the way to the top. I'd say, and Dobby, it looks like you're starting to ascend the stairs and bear your. You're kind of at the at the foot still, but you hear a a scream, scream from uh, uh, definitely a a man's voice, a, a deep scream that sounds like it's coming from the cellar below you. This, so, okay, so there's a dragon on the door that's like right in front of me, and then there's a cellar which we have not found the entrance to. We hear, right? Am I describing that correctly? Uh, yes, correct. The den that you were approaching the stairs from, above you, you heard something being dragged along the floorboards. Uh, now, as you're approaching the the top level, you hear a scream from the basement. Yeah, I feel like we're in someone's kill house. Um, so I just, I at this point, I'm just gonna stick next to Dobby, like a shadow. Um, and okay. can I just like keep my my battle axe and my shield out. I'm, I'm feeling very jumpy right now. Sure. Do you want to, like, have a readied action, like, to attack something or go into um, dodge? Um, 
I think that if something comes within five feet of Dobby, like the tile adjacent, then I will try to like tackle and pin that thing to the ground. Whatever gotcha. it is. Anything. Okay. So we'll have a uh, sort of like an attack, a grapple ready in case something approaches you. Specifically approaches Dobby. Okay, yeah. Dobby. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Where do you want to head? Continue upstairs? We go oh, up or down? Yeah, if we heard a scream going downstairs, we heard something oh, dragging, heard... but no yeah. scream from upstairs. Well, we're already almost upstairs. We should go check out upstairs. Uh, okay. I mean, if someone's screaming, then upper, uh, is it continual scream or just like a one-time scream? You heard one very loud, very long scream. Yeah, they're it sounded like okay someone or in, they're dead already. So that's just sounded like stairs. someone was in pain. Yes, like, ah! and then that's oh, it. Man. It's been done already. Let's check upstairs. <laughs> well, we'll just check upstairs. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm gonna move uh, you to. Actually, no, I won't. I have uh, some more things to reveal here. All right, so the door that is at the top of the landing, mm-hmm. that uh, does, it, it's not locked, but it does, it does open, it's closed right now. So you want to open it, right? Um, Yeah, I'd probably still just like knock-ish. Like, okay. Er. I assume you're kind of knocking, you're not entering any room without announcing that you're here. Yeah, I mean, you can hear me coming, so. Right. <laughs> but, Fair yeah. enough. Okay. So you open the door into some sort of a parlor. The centerpiece of this room is a gold inlaid low table, around which a handful of overstuffed chairs and sofas are neatly arranged. Other furniture includes a cabinet full of glass decanters and wine goblets and a six-foot-tall gilded harp standing in the northwest corner. Uh, There's a staircase, a a staircase in the northeast corner that ascends to the second floor. Uh, several dusty sheets lie in a small heap nearby. This is kind of like a bigger landing before going up to a full floor. Oh, okay. Could the harp have been what was getting dragged? Yeah, I'm going to roll like investigation, I guess, to see if I can see what if if this was if I see any drag marks or movement. Sure, um, give me a yeah, give me a check. Yeah, that's a seven. Not great. <laughs> uh, there's there's no drag marks. In fact, this harp looks like it's very heavy and would be very awkward to transport. So most likely it wasn't this. Do we um, see any drag marks on the ground? Nope, no drag marks on the ground. But you do see the sheets that were covering the furniture in this room in a heap in the corner. Um, can, can I, okay, can I climb up to the top of the harp and then just like perch there for a second and look around to see if I see something that looks less dusty than the other things in the room? Uh, nothing looks particularly dusty, actually. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. But you can climb on top of the harp. And when you get down and you jump down off the harp, or it could be when you're climbing, either way, mm-hmm. a few a few notes get plucked on the harp. In fact, you're certain, though, Michelle, that Bear did not accidentally kick the harp or touch it with something. You kind of jumped up on it, cleared the strings, but it still played some notes anyway. Ooh. Bear, why are you playing music? Guys... Guys, the harp played itself. I'm a very acrobatic bear. I don't hit a string unless I want to. (laughs) Something's up. Hmm. How's my detect magic looking? Um, you're not detecting any magic. Oh, it went off? No. Oh, sorry. Yes, the spell is active. I'll say it's active now at this point, yeah. You have not detected anything yet. Huh. What's also interesting, Dobby, what is your uh, passive perception? Uh, 13. 
13. When you heard the notes, you looked. The strings were not moving. So, just sound. Just sound came out of the harp. What sounded like came out of the harp. Except no strings moved, and Bear is certain that uh, he didn't touch any of them. Can I inspect the harp closer? Yeah. Go ahead. Give me an investigation check. Yeah, I, I want to, like, mm, wave 18. my hands around the strings. Yeah, at, at some point. yeah there's no, no sound or anything like that when you get close to it. You look at it, and you pluck a string. It makes the same s- sound that you heard earlier, but you're certain that they were not they were not moving when you heard the sound first. Was that from my check? Yep. Your investigation seems to be a normal... Well, it's a very nice harp. Probably worth a lot of money. Okay, guys. If we're done screwing around with the harp, I guess let's keep going up, or are we going down to the basement? <laughs> hmm. We definitely heard something being moved up here, though, right? And now there's yes. no drag marks. No drag marks. Now we're hearing music. I'm either going crazy or there's something going on here. I guess uh, let's keep going up, though, because this is just a landing, so there's another floor above us. Okay. Alrighty. So we're going to head up. Push forward. Alright, so I'm going to move the map. We're going to move to... Uh, Let's see here. Yep, I'll move you to the right. I'll hit the uh, the ping button to show you where we are, but we are here. Also, Dobby, I don't know how like athletic or graceful your character is, um, but I imagine that as I'm quite we're walking graceful. around. Oh, okay, okay. I imagine that as we're walking around, Bear's just, like, sticking so close to Dobby that, like, I'm basically underfoot. Like, you're probably tripping over me every so often. Every time I have Dobby's... good acrobatics. Okay, nice. In that case, never mind. I'm just, like, crawling around <laughs> as you walk gracefully. Every time Dobby stops, you bump into him. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Did you watch it over there? <laughs> trying to walk. So, uh, Protecting Steph, you're, the Dobby. Sorry. you're leading the group here. You can see there's a long hallway once you get up to the uh, top stair. You can see there's one that goes south, and then there's a uh, perpendicular one that goes to the uh, to the west. Okay. Um, I believe uh, if I have any sense of direction, if we heard the, someone dragging something, it would be kind of to the west then? Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay, so I guess let's check the west hallway since I believe that's where we heard the sound coming from. Okay, so there's a door that's ajar, a door that is closed, and a spiral staircase at the end of the west wing here. Staircase going up? Yep. I think I'll check the door that's kind of open first because if someone's dragging something, they probably weren't closing doors. Right. Let's, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check this room out okay so you check out the door uh the the left door that is slightly open and this clearly is a guest bedroom it hasn't been disturbed in years as evidenced by thick dust and cobwebs covering everything the dust here but no dust downstairs right exactly Mm -hmm. the furnishings in this room include a narrow bed um there is a mattress that looks uncomfortable. There's an elegantly carved headboard. Uh, there's a dresser, a nightstand, coat rack, and a padded armchair. There's an oval mirror that hangs on the wall next to the door. Again, all covered with dust. Seems like they haven't been used in ages. Mm, I was going to do an investigation to see if I see any names like that would match the graveyard. I rolled a six, though, so I'm assuming I don't see that much. No. Mm-hmm. It is starting to get dark, however. So you have a little bit of light coming in from windows and that natural light. But it might be time for... Uh, Stephanie, are you a human? I'm half elf, so half I elf. have some dark vision. So none of you need light sources. You are you all have dark vision. Makes it perfect for creepy situations. Great. Okay. So then, uh, where to next? Um... I guess we'll check the other door that's nearby. Sure. There's a room across the hall, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, the room that's on the opposite side. So the right-hand side door. Um, I assume you're knocking and then entering? Well, um, I would probably still be in the room. You guys would be kind of blocking me, so would you guys knock? Nah, or... just enter at this point. Okay. <laughs> Another guest room, similar to the one that you see on the other side. All similar furnishings. No inscriptions, no... no uh, indicators that this was someone's room this was someone's bedroom it all looks very plain still covered in dust yes the only difference is that this door was closed the other was open what about the doorknobs are they covered in dust um yeah the inside one would be yeah mm -hmm. is the one with the door open covered in dust as well inside doorknob, yes, but the outside one, no. Clearly someone opened this. Huh. This is probably where disturbed. the this is probably where the sound of the dragon came from. This will be okay. directly above the den. I rolled an investigation. I only got a nine, um, but do we do I see anything? No. Yeah, I'd like to check the floors too, see if there's yeah. any. No drag marks. Everything looks undisturbed completely. Mm. Okay, that's weird, guys. Huh. Was there a room on the other side of the hallway? There was a south hallway. Um, so, I think... yeah, I was going to say something. So as as you're now investigating this room on the right, you do hear, and it's funny, the... Uh, yeah, I just heard creaking. The audio just <laughs> played that, too. The, the music just played <laughs> yeah. that, too. But creaking of a door. So the, the ajar door creaks. Mm -hmm. But you look at it, and it's in the same position you left it. Hmm. This is like the harp thing. There is definitely something weird going on here. Um, you all hear the loud snorting of a hog, a pig. Sounds like it's coming from the kitchen area, down below. We. What? Now I I have knowledge of these. We're we're looking for a strange alternate dimensions, right? Yeah. And I have knowledge of these. Is it possible to hear noises coming from those different... Give me an arcana dimensions? check. <laughs> Not good. A one. No. Yes. You have no idea, but I guess your best guess would be no, since they're hidden, but again, this could be all... You're mixing up things in your mind. You're not too certain. Hmm. I'm actually, um, I'm going to try Divine Sense. Kind sure. In the middle of this, of this place. Um, yeah. It's so 30 I, feet, I, correct? I'm sorry? I believe it is 30 feet in the distance for that. I have, um, my Divine Sense says within 60 feet. 60 feet. That's, there you go. Yeah. It's not behind total cover, though, so I don't know how, how useful that is in this situation. You would basically be able to get these two rooms that you can see into, like if you stood in the middle, like right okay. here or so, you could see the two rooms. It, it does not go through, like, an inch of material, so, yeah. Okay. So that's the problem. So do you want to use it now? Um, I, w I will use it once, yeah, because I can use it three times. I'm going to use it once because we heard the door creaking, so if I can see mm -hmm. anything like that, I mean, this is a good time to you use it. You do not it. sense any... Uh, whatever the indicators are. I uh, believe it's Celestial, Fiend, Fae, or Undead. Undead, yep. Yep, you do not. Or affected by the hollow spell. I'm not sure nope. what that is, I apologize. But... No, it's just like when you, uh, the consecrated ground of, of some sort of a temple or something like that. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. But no, you don't, you don't sense any of that. Nope. Hmm. It's very strange. Everything seems so ordinary is basically the, the outlook here. And we haven't heard any noises from where we are, well, besides the door, or up, up above where we are. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Uh, no. We haven't heard any other screams yet, either. No I'm screams, no. Mm -mm. Just okay. that first one from the basement. Yeah, he's a, probably a goner already. Where would you like to head next? Um, I guess let's let's check out the rest of this floor. Um, there is a rest. There is a south hallway with a couple of rooms. It looks like. Yep. 
there was a southern hallway. There are rooms to the east and west. Um, you want to open that first one on the east side? I, th- I think so. I think we're probably just going to go through this floor. What do you sure. guys? I mean, I look at my companions to see. Yeah, we should probably keep uh, definitely finish checking the floor. Since sure. Okay. okay, so you see a staircase here uh, from the east door. That's the first one that you approach. Um, this right, clearly up. goes up to a third floor. Well, there's two staircases on this floor to go up? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I don't want to go up those yet. I think I'll check the other room that's to the to the left. Okay, in this room... Uh... This is a spacious bedroom. It has walls decorated with wainscoting and rusty oil lamps. Four poster stand, a four poster uh, stands against the south wall, its bedpost carved to look like stags and wolves. Opposite the bed is a stone hearth with a black marble mantle that has a pair of elk antlers mounted above it. Uh, a bare, dust covered writing desk is set against the west wall under a pair of tall windows that are flanked by burgundy drapes. Other furnishings include a wardrobe in the northeast corner and an empty dog kennel to the south, uh, in the southeast corner. Is this room dusty? Uh, just the desk, but the rest of it looks used. Right. How's the wardrobe look? The wardrobe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the wardrobe is tall and has... Anything inside of it? Let's see here. Hmm. No. Nothing in it. Empty. Huh. Yep. You said the desk was a bare desk? Yep, nothing on it, but it is dusty. Doesn't Mm -hmm. look like it's been used in quite some time. Is there a drawer in that closet? Something, maybe like a hidden compartment of some sort? Uh, no, it doesn't seem like that, but you can give me an investigation check or a perception check. Uh, 17. Alright, cool. 17, so you check out the desk. It does seem like an ordinary desk, but um, I take it you're going to be looking around the room? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. With that check of an investigation of 17, you can see that the bedposts look just a little odd. Um, they they look like they could be twisted. Like they move. The bedposts look like they could be twisted. Yes. Like the, the wolf. Like the... in a tricky way or like a sexy way? <laughs> <laughs> they could be rotated, basically. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just gonna jog up and start, like, fidgeting <laughs> with them. Sure. So if you turn the bed uh, posts, um, you notice that one of them turns counterclockwise and it kind of locks into place. Is there, like, a secret compartment? Thing. When there. the bed post locks into place, uh, there's a door that opens up on the southwest wall. It leads to a circular chamber beyond. I will love Hidden entrance. Secret trap door. Nice job, Bear. You can move your characters Uh, in. Thanks, guys. Praise from Dobby himself. (laughs) Wait, where, where did this door open? Um, I can see it from where I'm standing. So you see into this room here. Oh, right here. See. Yep. Um, However, when before, well, yeah, you can move yourself in. But before, as you approach the opening, you do hear that scream coming from downstairs again. In fact, it's also accompanied by a shattering of glass. Does the scream sound the same as it did before? Uh, It does, yes. That shrill, high pitch, or sorry... Uh, deep, manly voice screaming. Ah! 
Okay, Dobby, clearly that whoever it was was ah. not dead the first time. I think we gotta go I check. I know, I was just thinking that. <laughs> but this is getting so interesting up here. Don't you wanna check this out first and then? But everything's so dusty. I can't imagine that anything's gonna change by the well, time we go down and come back up. Yeah, but he could be dead now, so let's just oh, check out this room. Okay, compromise. We check out this room and then we immediately go into the basement. All right, deal. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you're not going into this room yet. No, we, we're going to go into that room, check it out, and then oh, head gotcha. straight downstairs. Okay. So this room. Uh, there's an explosion of some kind that has damaged the two uppermost levels of this tower, creating a gaping hole between them and the covering, uh, covering this area with soot. A curved wooden staircase that once rose... Uh, along the outer wall has been destroyed, leaving no easy way to reach what remains of the tower's topmost floor. All that's left of the staircase are a few jagged shards of wood that jet out from the wall at different angles. Is so there a can... roof? There is, yes, but it's uh, it's clear that uh, whatever blew up or created, destroyed the floor above you, now mm. you can see through to the top and the... Um, the roof above it. It does look like there might be some holes there so that uh, you do see a collection of birds. There's a bunch of ravens um, at the top of the tower, perched top. Ooh, okay. What about these doors on the side? Uh, let's see. The door right here? Yeah. To the to the east? It look, mm -hmm. you, you would assume that connects to the hallway you were in pre previously. Okay, I can open guys, it for you if you'd like. We gotta go down the basement now. Why would there be a secret entrance to a room that has a door to it? Interesting. I will uh, right. just I will just get rid of that door so you can see it. There you go. Ah, I see. Mm -hmm. Can I check out the fireplace? Yeah, in this room. There's actually yeah. quite a bit of things scattered on the floor. If you take a moment to look you can see that they are uh, there's a couple of different items on the floor so let me let me read through them here um, yeah so there's a unlocked wooden chest with a scorched lid clawed iron feet and yeah actually that's it that's the only real piece of furniture that's still intact here can I look inside the chest yeah, you can look inside it, but it needs a, a key to open. You can oh. smash it if you'd like. Well, I do happen to have a battle axe. Okay. We did yeah, you follow could... a treasure map to get here, so... You could smash You could smash open the chest. You open it up, and inside... it's uh, The interior is divided into small compartments. Uh, you can see some sort of potion. You can't tell exactly what it would, would do yet. You'd have to have somebody identify it. Um, but definitely a potion there. It's, uh, there's also a bunch of, of small trinkets, random ones. In fact, we should roll for them in the player's handbook, so we won't do that, but there are six trinkets there. Guys, I don't know what this has to do with any of the fog or anything. Um... We're on a treasure hunt. That was a chest that could have been treasure. I, uh, have we, have we, while we're in here, does any of the wood match, like, the wood of the initial book that we've seen? No. Mm -mm. Okay. The dark oak wood, no. Everything in yeah. here is, uh, as I've described, it's been... But the book could have came from this room, right? Where all the ravens were? You said there's a lot of pecking on it? Oh, yeah. That, that's very true. There's definitely a... The book itself has markings all over it, so... Very possible. I think this is where the book came from, guys. So where do you can want to I... head next? We're close. Um, Michelle? Can I just pocket the potion real quick? The potion that was in the chest? Yeah. Yep, you could take that, that potion. Cool. Um, and then I would also like to just look at the soot in the fireplace here. Does it similarly look like it, it could have been used within the last couple of days? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay. Where to next? I guess downstairs to find okay. a dead guy. Okay. I don't think he's dead yet, man. You want to make a bet of it? I'm not a betting man. No fun. No. All right, I'll move you back to the first floor. Okay, I put you on the landing of those steps from before, right here. You can move yourselves down. Okay. All right. And you didn't see a door to a basement before, so where would you like to go? Well, there's clearly some secret entrances and doors in this place, so well, keep an eye out for anything. Um, when we walked in, we went immediately to like the center of the house. I think there was another way in that there was. entryway. Yep, there was in the foyer. There's there was a door. And that, if you open it, will take you down to the basement. Now, this basement ah, door is nice not out. locked, but it is stuck. Ooh. Oh, and actually, since we're in here, I'm closing that front door, which we did not close last time. Okay, I don't closing know if the front door. It makes any difference, but. <laughs> That's how we're going to get in. The door is stuck, though, so we would need somebody to open it. I have a bad axe. Bear. Go for it, Bear. Bear, do you want to break the door down or open it? Because it's like, it looks like it's lodged shut. Like, maybe it's swollen. Oh, oh, okay. I guess I could first try to, like, see if I can maybe give it a good old wiggle. Give me a good old athletics check. Athletics check. That's a plus two. I feel positively about this. How dare I challenge the dice gods? I have a six. On <laughs> you have a six. Athletics check. Okay. After um, it doesn't it doesn't come easy, and you make quite a bit of noise doing it, but you do get it open eventually, and nice. you can descend into the basement. I'm gonna move you to another portion of the map. Okay. It's, there you uh, go. Has the lighting down there? It's dark. So if you'd like to turn on a light, but you have dark vision, so I think you're okay. Yep. Alright, so we're in the basement now. Uh, the basement comes into a first kind of uh, cellar area here. This cold, damp, oddly shaped cellar has an eight foot high wooden ceiling and flagstone floor. The walls are made of rough mortared brick. Thick cobwebs cover crates, barrels, and other furniture stacked against the north wall. To the south, there's a pair of closed wooden doors. The door farthest from you swings open on rusty hinges, and beyond it, you can see a smaller chamber. Swung open by itself? Yep. And in fact, um, as you step forward, Dobby, you hear a whisper coming from that direction. Still no magic? Give me a perception check, Dobby, that you've moved towards it. 14. 14. Um, yes, you, you actually he can discern the whispering. You hear and what sounds like a man saying, I can't get out. To I hear, Steph, but I don't see. Correct. To Steph and Michelle, the two of you do not hear. Um, you hear the whisper, but you do not hear the sound. Okay. Don't hear exactly what it said. Uh, Dobby, you know what? You do detect magic. I do. Yeah, coming from that that room. Mm, kind of magic. It's a good question. Uh, ne- let's see. Necromancy. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it, guys. We got some uh, bad news here. There's a guy whispering that he can't get out, and I detect some necromancy magic, which is always bad news. Trust me, you I know. Being a former Dobby. necromancer. Trust me, I know. It's bad news. Ella, just just listen to him. Dobby knows. Yeah, it was undead, green, fire balls, or something to stay away from. You can. Well, you can... unfortunately. We have to get to the bottom of this, because otherwise, I don't know. I mean, we can't go back tonight either. Where are we going to go? Back down into the fog? We got no choice, man. We have to keep going. Yeah, so... Uh, you hear what I said? There's necromancy going on in there. 
so so Dobby, you you can kind of see because you have dark vision. You can see through to the doors, and actually you all do. You have an angle to this room. There's a well in this room. The only feature in that chamber is a uh, is the well. This this four foot diameter well in the middle of the of the chamber. Uh, next to uh, the shaft is a wooden bucket fastened to a coiled length of rope. There's always a well. Bad news. Um, okay, right. but that's that's where we hear, like, the whispering in that? Yep. In fact, now that you're all kind of approaching it and listening that Dobby keyed you in, you hear from within that chamber another whisper saying, Brorn, where are you, boy? Isn't the name from that side? In the graveyard? Yeah, the dog's name. All right, I'm calling Hockey over. Enough okay. This. You want ho- Hockey... Can come in through one of the broken windows, I guess. All right. Yep. And uh, he'll he'll approach. So he's he's by your sh- your side now. I brush him nervously. What do you say? Uh, hesitantly, I say, "Hockey, I'm gonna. I need you to do us a solid, buddy. <laughs> Go in there and check it out." <laughs> Hockey uh, goes up to the well. He perches right on the edge. He gazes down into the darkness. He replies back, do I have to go in? No. You see anything? It's just dark. I can't see beyond it. All right, come back. All right, he flies back. All right. He said that his best guess would be that it goes down about 60 feet. But again, it can't see the bottom. Hmm. Okay, but there is another door here too, right? There is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can open that room. It basically is a uh, servant's quarters. Nothing of note mm-hmm. there, really. Just a, a you know, bed, some wardrobe, and an old rug. So there, was, there was no person in that room, right? The guy that I heard? No, no, no person. Nope. Mm-mm. Um, I, I want to... I'm like in tears because of how brave Hockey is. I'm really moved by Hockey's courage in that moment, so I'm in tears. Um, And I'm gonna just kind of like lean my head through the door to the room with the well. I'm just gonna be like, hello! (laughs) (laughs) You hear the whispers. Brorn, is that you, boy? Yes, it's Brorn. Can you tell where they're coming from? Um, the the well, from inside the well. All right. Does anybody have something I could throw down that well? Um, I did. I did an investigation check again, just in the servants' quarters. I'm looking mostly for names. No names in the servants' okay. quarters. Well, um, I assume there's like something in that I could pick up, um, like a towel or something to hand him to to light up. Uh. To who? Uh, Dobby. Dobby was looking for something to light up. Oh, I'm gonna sure. Throw it down the well, light it yeah, up. you could throw an object down the well, something, a trinket, or like you said, a maybe a piece of robe, cloth or something. You throw it down, yeah. and it gets to the bottom, and it disappears into darkness. I put light on it. Yes, I know. It disappears into darkness at the bottom. The light disappears? Yep. Impossible. What kind of sorcery is this? Uh, can I, can I, like, as I'm leaning into the room, I'd like to start barking like a dog. Okay. What do you, what do you, um, what is your goal here? Just curious. I just am curious to see if that evokes a reaction like, (gasps) Rorn, I hear you, boy. You know, something like that, like a, a change in the script that we've been hearing. Sure. You hear you hear uh, the man say, Brorn, is that you, boy? Brorn! Brorn! Guys, can, do you think they can hear us? I mean, what was what was the second step of your plan on that? <laughs> See, if, I don't know. Maybe they can do something on their end. By the way, we're Can definitely going to need you to roleplay this, Michelle. I need to know exactly how Bear sounds here. Bork! Bork 
fork. <laughs> Run. Fork, fork. That can't be you. You have such a deep, you know, guttural growl. Times changed, man. How you been? <laughs> and at that, the the voice you 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 don't hear any repeat. Oh, okay. Can I tell where the magic is sourcing from? Like the source of it? The well. Like yeah. down inside the well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give me an insight check, Dobby. Insight. And I'm actually going to give you advantage on it because you are a former necromancer in your life. Other life. Oh, you well, still didn't do so well. Not so well on insight, no. <laughs> okay. All right, never mind. Actually, We're rolling great tonight. you really should have given me an arcana check. So what would that be if arcana it was arcana instead? Arcana would be a 13. <laughs> okay. Advantage. Arcana 13. Um, you know that when people That's... turn into spirits, ghosts that haunt an area... Um, it's often be that they're something keeping them here, right? Exactly. They get attached or kept kept there. And so perhaps this well has some sort of meaning in the the man's life that it's attached he's attached to it. But again, hmm. it you've faced ghosts and undead before. You feel like if it wanted to attack you, it would have already. Um Okay, okay. so when we pick up sorry this is like an outside of game question when we pick up items in other sessions do those items carry over like does bear now have his immovable rod always oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay so once we went to icewind dale and bear got goggles of night while he was there can i can i put those on now because it says that the goggles of night, um, let's see, the it increases the range of dark vision by 60 feet. So if I wear these goggles, will I theoretically have dark vision for 120 feet? You actually already have dark vision for 120 feet. It'll be 180. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like the vision is the problem. It seems like there's some sort of magic obscuring the bottom of the well. Okay, so even if I, like, put on all my gear and stare yeah. intently... Right. right. Well, regardless, I'm going to put all, on all my gear and stare intently into the yeah, well. Yeah, you know that when you go up top again, it would be dark now. So you probably would benefit from that just in general. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm helping. As yeah. I have a theory, there's no way... That my lit, my object with light on it would have just vanished or been covered, and we can't see into this well, so this has to be some sort of magical barrier or entryway into a pocket dimension that we've been searching for. Ooh. Hmm. Um, you can continue talking, but uh, you're hearing a bunch of noises coming from upstairs. You hear the sound of hogs uh, from the kitchen again. You hear glass shattering coming from uh, the windows on the den. You hear the harp being played. You hear a child laughing, which sounds like it's coming from uh, the third floor. And you also hear a dying man scream again somewhere else in the cellar. All of these things are happening now one after another. This house is going crazy. I can't take this, you guys. We gotta yeah. do something. Okay, so what are our options? Our options are to leave and go into the fog, and who knows what's gonna happen. Stay in this crazy house, or go down the well and see what happens? Yes. Okay. Do, do, I think do, my do, vote do, is do, the do. well. <laughs> what? What's up there? Oh, oh, sorry. I, I'm just super ready to jump in whenever you are. Like, um, yeah, yeah. Bear's like getting ready to leap. Let's do it, guys. I think, I think, I think we're on to something. Wait a minute. We're not just gonna jump down here, are we? We don't know how far down it goes. Hmm. Go hurt yourself. Um, I mean, wells, wells are generally constructed. Do, is there a ladder, um, or like rings to the side of the well, or no? Oh, we no, do have... a bucket okay. can be lowered into it. 
Is bear small enough to be lowered into the bucket? Sure. Ooh. You want to go down, bear? Go in the bucket? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. So, uh -huh. and I'll lay my battle axe across my knees. Okay. Off you go with bear. Okay, so bear, you're lowered into the buck by the bucket into the wells, uh, into the wells cistern. You get down, and it's very dark. In fact, your dark vision does not work when you get down. But eventually, you land on a floor, and you can tell that there's must be some sort of darkness shrouding the last maybe five feet or so of this well. You hear the whispers of that man again. Brorn, is that you? And then, you, I mean, you're down as far as you can now. Guys, can you hear me? Yes, can they can. Can you hear me? I think I'm at the bottom. <laughs> we can hear we can hear you, Bear. Okay. I'm what do you see down there? I can't see anything. It's all dark. But do you I want see... to uh feel around? Yes. I'm I'm going to like do the thing where you're trying to not like stub your toes in the dark, like you <laughs> usually do anyway. So I'm like reaching out with my fingers and my toes, like trying oh. to yeah. Hold on to the bucket so in case we have to pull you up. <gasps> so you, you do Smart. grab something as you're reaching out, feeling around on the floor and the the walls here. You find some sort of chain with a uh, amulet around it. Can't tell until you're lifted above the darkness, but you also feel like you um, found a framed portrait. It's large. In fact, it's probably at least chest high to you. That's what it feels like, at least. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, well, in that case, I'll be like, I'll say, guys, I found loot! And then I'll, <laughs> I'll try to grab the portrait. Um, I'll, like, shove it under my armpit, but then I have to use my whole arm to hold it against my body because it's, like, chest high. So it's, like, as tall as I am. And then in the other hand, I'll hold the amulet. And then I'll just, like, kind of scoot back to the bucket. Okay. All right, so you head up. They pull you back up in the bucket, and you can see now clearly what you have in your hand. You have some sort of a holy symbol um, on a gold chain. And the picture you have, which is large and kind of hard to hold on to while you're being pulled up, but you're managing it, is a portrait uh, of the uh, a, a lady, a woman. Is there any magic coming from either of these items? No. No. Mm -mm. However, if you give me a religion check, any of you, I'd say, Ella, you'd have an advantage on this, you could uh, determine what god it is okay let me um no. oh. oh of course i use my two nat 20s wow <sighs> two nat 20s i should have just rolled one oh man I'm you're certain mad. i'm gonna roll terrible the rest of the night you're certain <laughs> ella that this is the symbol of soon the god of love and beauty this would be worth a decent amount of gold 25 gold or so and could be a holy symbol, a uh, focus, spellcasting focus for cleric or paladin of soon. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's something magic going on down there, and this isn't it. There's a beautiful woman in the portrait who uh, does seem to be perhaps the lady of this house, you would gather, based on the uh, insignia's iconography in the painting. Um, so, so the bottom of the well was just that. It was just the bottom of the well with darkness. Yep. And a couple things. Yep. Didn't feel any other entry into anything. No. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. um, Michelle. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, I was going to say, I'm going to have to go back down with Bear. Since I have the tech magic on, maybe I can... Since she can't see, I might be able to sense where we should go down there. Uh, no worries. So you're you're deciding whether or not to go back down the well, and you hear um, a voice from the stairs coming down to the basement, and it says, uh, "We are approaching. We mean you no harm. There's no need for weapons. We are coming down peacefully." 
Um, uh, I respond back. Yes, this is Ella from from the guild. We we are also in peace. All right. Check so my uh, when you get here. Yeah. So you're approached by three. Um, I wonder what I should do here. So these are real people. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Um, yeah, they're gonna be. Sure. Yeah, let's let's do this. <laughs> Why not? They are humans. Uh, there are four humans who uh, appear in front of you. I'll describe all of them. Um, the first one that comes down um, is short, uh, stocky, modest, uh, uh, modestly dressed. Uh, this is a woman who seems to be like the leader, perhaps the uh, the matriarch of this group. You can see there's a, another uh, human who is a uh, tall, seems a bit more timid with wispy white hair and a lazy left eye. There is a morose, rail-thin figure of a, of a human also in the group. Um, they seem to de defer to the others, more quiet. And then there is this, uh, I guess the last of the human. There's four humans, basically. This person is, seems to be uh, more charismatic. Um, as you start to talk and discuss, you see this person looks like they're impatient. So you've got those four creatures. One one tall, uh, sort of uh, timid person. Another one who is quiet and respectful, but very thin. And then the uh, leader, who's this woman who's a little bit older, uh, but she seems to be the talker of the group. And then someone who seems to be slightly impatient and... Uh, doesn't seem to want to give you the time to say like this is a waste of, of their of their time. Okay. So these four humans approach you. Again, all of them dressed very similar, black and red robes. Uh, they don't look like they are too, um, in terms of style or anything like that, that they are too expensive, um, but they do the job. They do want to show you that they are a group, that they are united. So they don't and seem like those wanderers then? That we heard Correct, of. exactly. The, the, the Vistani that you read about were very colorful and they uh, were very charismatic and uh, you can tell that these people are not Vistani. <laughs> uh, but you do see the woman who uh, introduced herself as Madrina. She tells you that the tall human human man is uh, Tasper and then Renick is the quiet, respectful one and Vinique is the one that looks like she just wants to get out of here. Uh, these four approach you, and uh, Mordrina says that um, that is the old soul of the man of this, uh, the Baron of this house. His soul has not been laid to rest, so he waits in the well where he died. And he died in a well. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. He <laughs> fell down the well, uh, so the story goes. What are you um. doing here? We were, uh, yeah. we were summoned. We, we were summoned by um, by someone who asked us to investigate here. It's impossible. No one has been to Chalet Brantifax in over 150 years. I peek out from behind Ella and say, that's not true. There's fresh tracings of somebody who's been here in the past day or so. That would be us. No others. And, and what are you who are doing you? Here? <laughs> yeah. We've been watching you. We can see that you're not here to plunder for loot. Otherwise, you would have taken um, more uh, more of the items. I see that you've gathered those from the well. But um, what is your purpose in coming here? Uh, well, these aren't uh, looting items. I sense magic coming from the well. You're merely investigating. Ooh. But again, what is your purpose? What who let who led you here? That is um confidential and a little bit above our pay grade. We were just told to come here to investigate some some weird findings. Well, we and do know that you are 
you must be brave adventurers because uh, you were not frightened away by our mimicry. Mimicry? Oh, was that you making all the noises then? Each one of them separately makes a sound that you've heard before. One makes the man scream, uh, another the hogs and broken glass sound, the harp being played. Ah, well, those are certainly skills that have come into use at some point. Con congrats. Yes, you see, um, we tried to frighten you away, but after a while we realized that you were not here to plunder or loot, you were here to explore for some unknown reason, and we want to find out why before we uh, make any decisions about you. Hmm. Well, um, then... Now that we have introduced ourselves, like I said, we are private investigators who have come here. Um, now, you said no one has visited here in 150 years, so what is your relationship to um, this fine manor? Dusty. We've been using it as a base of operations, you could say. Hmm. You're operating. Also, it's confidential. Uh, just as you have your secrets, we have ours. Who told you to come here? A little birdie. Wouldn't have been a raven, was it? Um, Maybe. can I do can I do an insight check? Sure. On these guys? Mm -hmm. Bear's doing a horrible job of keeping a poker face, by the way. <laughs> I'll, uh, I asked him why they would say a raven. What makes them say a raven? I did a I have a fourteen for insight. Um, they seem like they want to, they have perhaps a, a 14 insight would probably give you, well, not that much, but they, they do have some sort of guarded secret and they want to make sure they can trust you before revealing anything to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Andrew, you said, uh, why did you say a raven specifically? And at that, Madrina looks at all of them and they transform into their hybrid version. These are were ravens, and I'm going to show you a picture of it now. Whoa! So cool. Is that what delivered the book to me? Whoops! I'm going to show you a picture of these were ravens. They actually did some really cool art for the book. Here you go. Ah, see, that's a skill that's a little bit cooler than your hog noises. I feel like you should have led with this. Uh, I don't think that's what brought me the book. It was definitely just a normal little birdie. Yes, we can take many forms. However, and they're speaking to you in this hybrid form now. Um, none of us brought you the book. But if it was a raven, one from another kindness, which is what they call groups of raven, uh, were ravens then perhaps you are trusting and there was a reason for you to be here. Regardless, you are heroes, are you not? Uh, absolutely. Perhaps we can help each other, then. Okay. Well, what, uh, what do you propose? Come, let us speak on the, uh, the first floor. I think that's fair. It's still pretty creepy down here. Yeah. So if you will, you'll come into the den area and they start walking outside. So if you'd like to uh, follow them, you can. Inside is dark. It is okay. dark. I don't, yeah. I don't. <laughs> I've got night vision. I'm good. Yeah, you're, you buy both. You're all fine. You have dark vision. You don't need light sources or anything like that. Um, the were ravens lead you outside to the graveyard. Uh, they fly over the fence, but course you probably can't so if you'd like to follow them into the graveyard uh you are welcome to it yeah, why not? Uh, i would follow yeah we didn't go in earlier right so the were ravens take you to the to the graveyard and most of them stand by the grave that they've dug up before uh sylphine um madrina stands in the middle of the graveyard and starts to explain to you something so we rare ravens are part of a society that tries to protect the realms. Whenever there is an evil artifact, a uh, something that a very powerful evil 
group or individual would like to keep for themselves, we try to hide it away. In fact, that's what Chalet Brantifax has been for us. It's been sort of a, a hideout where we can store items that we do not know um, of a safer place. When we were uh, recently discovering, uh, we recently discovered that there is a secret passageway to a pocket dimension called the Shadowfell. This gateway is beneath the grave of Sylphine. We do not know why, but these places happen. They can move around, the mist can obscure them, and it seems like one has appeared here. We entered into this shadow fell recently, uh, but we were driven back. There is some fiendish creatures on the other side. You see, there is a artifact there that we would like. And we would like your help in getting it. Well, as my oath of the watchers, I I have heard of these other realms and um, I would like to assist you in any way possible. Well, you may not like how to get there, but we have to dig up the grave of Sylphine. You need to lay to rest there. And when the fog rolls in, in another hour or so, you will be transported into this pocket dimension. I have a suggestion. Go ahead. Have a suggestion? Uh, you say that you don't know where to keep these items. If we were to help you, I would like to suggest we bring this item to our place of chosen... Uh, What's the word I could use? Um, our our protective place um, is okay. a library where we hold many magical items. It's very safe, and I would feel comfortable with this item being held there. If are you we were speaking to help of you secure it? Are you speaking of Candlekeep, the great yes, library? I am. That would be acceptable. And um, obviously, Candlekeep would keep it safe and keep it secret. We could we could agree to that. Unfortunately, right. we cannot go in with you. We will need someone here to make sure that you you can um, you will be able to be returned. And unfortunately, um, we are all very weakened from going in there earlier. We will be of no I think, help. I think one of you should come at least as some insurance to make sure you guys do the best you can to bring us back. Uh, sure. Uh, one of them, the impatient one, Vinique, will volunteer. Mm. She says that I'm I'm getting a bit antsy. I would love to see some action and get, get this um, saddle back to the material plane. I look at Ella. I don't like this one. Okay, so you said a saddle? What exactly are we looking for? So the artifact that you're looking for is called the Saddle of the Cavalier. Uh, there was a uh, a very evil man named uh, named uh, Harn Dorvath. And Dorvath was a famed hunter. Um, it's clear that his he was consumed by evil and is in this um, Shadowfell realm. His mausoleum is on the other side, and you have to go in and get the saddle and bring it back. Now, um... It's just not safe in this other realm? I mean, it sounds... Why would we be br bringing evil into our world willingly? <laughs> if it was, uh... If it's left in this Shadow Realm, and we're worried that perhaps others may try to approach the... the what is this place called? Brantifax, um, that this may be the end of this safe location. So we want to get this saddle out so there would be no reason for others to to try to find it. So what if somebody were to stumble upon a new portal to the Shadowfell realm? Is 
is uh, do you think that's a thing that could hypothetically happen asking for a friend oh the shadow fell is a we don't really have time to explain the specifics of it but the shadow fell is a plane of existence that is unknown to most only a uh, few select have heard of it before and pockets or excuse me portals to it open up all over the place in fact there are some travelers that can go through and command um, entrance to Shadowfell re regions like the Vistani mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cool I'm going to turn back to my friends and be like guys the well I think we should go through the well I think it's another portal also, I really don't like the idea of being buried in someone else's grave. That's that's creepy. The well is not a Shadowfell portal. The well is simply mm. the the uh, the spirit of a once proud Baron looking for his dog. Oh, oh, okay, gotcha. My bad. I thought it was another portal. Well. I am with Bear that I do not like the idea of being buried alive to assume that I'm going to travel <laughs> to another realm. <laughs> um, I am assuming that's the only way to go, though. That's yes. Mm -hmm. And how how did you find out that <laughs> this was the way to go? I mean, this may sound like a silly question, um, but how many people have you buried alive to figure out that this is the this is the way to get? Uh, they have not know, buried. They have not buried anyone other than themselves. Been, what? They have not buried any other anyone other than were ravens before. I'd like to request that the speaker of their group be the one that comes with us. Um, all the other three kind of take offense to that, but Madrina raises her hand and says, I will go. All right. Okay. We have to get I that get... saddle. She looks at all of them and she kind of has a quick discussion. You can hear them, but she says that we need that saddle. It's for the greater good. I, I would like to look up at her with my big old deep gnome eyes, which are, I imagine, evolutionarily adapted for seeing in dark caves. So I have giant sure. eyes and I look up with like puppy dog bear eyes and I say, thank you, Madrina. Yeah. And then I and then I run after Dobby. Sure. And Dobby, uh, you can your detect magic senses the uh, the this portal opening up from the grave. So it does kind of Makes sense to you that that is the way to get in. Where is the necromancy magic coming from? The spirit. Oh. All okay. right, guys. Well, we guess... better get started so we don't miss the fog. Yeah, if the fog's coming in, let's go. All right. So you spend the next hour or so digging, getting down to the uh, to the to the coffin, and uh, they they offer well. I guess Madrina will go first to show that she knows what she's doing and to prove to you that it's safe. She'll go down into the bottom and lay down. So do we lay down next to her? Yep, you all go into the grave and just basically sit or lay on the ground. After a few moments of waiting, you hear the way ravens up top say, the fog is coming. Prepare yourself. And then the fog sweeps over the uh, the top of your of the grave the, the 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 dug hole and then the fog kind of clears and you know six feet above you it is very much different the climate the atmosphere the uh, although it was dark when you approached uh, now it definitely looks like it's very dark overcast it is it is a different you're in a different location completely. The transformation was seamless, almost like the mist came and the mist went. No sounds, no um, sensations. You were just in a different location. I was hoping you were going to say sunny and 75 out. <laughs> totally different. Uh, the ground is similar to what you left when you crawl out of the hole. 
um, similar to like uh, the, the Brantifax chalet, but um, the burial site that you're in is all the same, except about th maybe 60 feet in front of you, you see a very large mausoleum. There are two gargoyles that roost atop, um, and they're located about 30 feet from, sorry, 60 feet from your burial ground. You do see uh, the fog and mist kind of surrounding the area, though, like as if there's no other locations except for the graveyard and this mausoleum, completely covered with fog surrounding the entire thing, like a dome. Is it the mausoleum that we have to get to? Yes, and I'm going to switch maps to the mausoleum. I'm going to... I'm going to just kind of, like, look around, and I'm going to be like... <coughs> Mr. Dorvath! Mr. Dorvath! I'm just gonna kind of call out to him. <laughs> There's no, uh, no response or anything like that. Alright, I tried. Uh, place um, your characters have... on the map. Cassie Dobby. I don't know how to do that. I apologize. Oh, I'll move you on. Bear, do you need me to move you on? Um, I thought I put myself on the map. Do you not see me? Oh, yeah, I do see you. Yep, you're up top. I'll move you down to the bottom. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to give you night vision and your 60 feet dark vision. All right, so there you are, everyone. The graveyard would be south behind you, and you see two gargoyles up top of this mausoleum. They're actually moving, and they're looking at you as you approach. Don't make eye contact. Okay. Um. Um. No, I still can't see anything on my map. Um, oh, but really? Nonetheless, oh, I gotcha. Um, I, I just kind of go. We're okay, guys. We're, we're cool. We're cool, man. What about now, Steph? Can you see? Yep, I can see fine. Okay. Thank you. All um, right. the gargoyles are gonna take flight and start to head towards you. We're gonna go into initiative here. Um, <laughs> We're going to do initiative a little differently. I know in our Supernatural 20 game, we use our um, alternating initiative. But since we're playing a Candlekeep game here, and I've been wanting to run them as close to the books as possible, we're going to use normal initiative. So if everybody could roll for me a, a initiative check, that'd be great. Should I roll for hockey separate or keep it the same as myself? I'll still uh, allow you to use hockey on your turn. I don't like not having the creature go when you don't. I got okay. a 14. 14 for Steph. 23. 23 for Andrew. Oh, wait, wait, no, I cheated. Oh, you cheated. I rolled a, I rolled a 20 plus 3. Not a oh. d20. I got a 21. Okay. 21 for Bear. 13 for Dobby. Okay, that's a little different. All right, and the gargoyles are gonna roll. Okay, great. So we're gonna start with Bear. Bear, these gargoyles are approaching you. They they do look like they are. They have the intent of harming you in the group. Okay, well that is very upsetting, um, and I I'm going to take that personally. Um, I'm still working on my anger issues. And so I'm going to fly into a rage. And I'm it's very rude. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm I'm gonna fly into a rage, and I'm gonna whip out my axe and my shield. And I'm gonna say, "Don't you lay a finger on my Dobby." The um, the only issue with the rage is that if you don't make an attack this turn, it's gonna end. So you may want to. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, then I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna shout, don't you lay a finger on my Dobby, and then I'm gonna, like, leap forward epically. And then, uh, as I leap forward, I'm gonna attack this 
this fella over here. Okay, sure. I'd say he's like above the ground. He's flying. So if you wanted to make a, a jump or something like that, what's your strength? 14? Strength is 14, yes. Okay, we'll say that he is, let's see here. He's only 10 feet off the ground. So if you wanted to just jump and make the attack, you can. Oh, okay, cool. All oh, right. Thanks. Yeah, so I'm gonna just like run up to right below him and then I'm gonna look straight up and like huh, and launch myself straight off the ground. No running start or anything. <laughs> Alright, perfect. So make a swipe up, Adam. Will your attack here? What is 16. 16. To hit. Very nice. That will hit. You do sense that uh, these gargoyles are a little harder to hit than some creatures because they are made of stone, so it's more like that's their armor. So you do hit with a 16, though. Ooh, okay. All right. Roll so, your attack uh, damage. Okay, D8 plus 4. So... Okay, so that looks like 8 damage. Is there something else that gets added because of rage? Uh, so that I think that's with the rage, is it not? The plus 4? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, All right, yeah. cool. So I do eight damage. Okay, so eight damage. And you notice that all of it doesn't go through because um, they're made of stone. And so this they do probably require magical weapons to do more damage. doesn't seem like it did as much as it would normally okay. do. So I'm going to shout over my shoulder and I'm going to say, use magic, use magic. I got you. <laughs> all right, we go to the gargoyles next. This one's going to stay with you. Um, but the other ones are going to fly over to, to Steph here. All right, so the, both gargoyles make a bite and a claw on you each. So we'll start with Michelle. What's your armor class for bear? 17. Okay, so both claw and bite are going to miss from this one, but it will, it will still fly around you on the other side. And the other one is going to attack Ella with a bite and a claw. I don't think it's going to get you either because you're wearing full plate, correct? Um, correct. My armor class is 20. Yeah, with a shield. So, yeah, so not going to come close with those attacks and bites. But, um, you know, it does look like they're hard to hit. So we go to the group. We go to Ella. Okay. Um, one moment here. Okay, so if he is attacking me, that means he's within range for me to attack him. Oh, yeah. Yep, they're five feet from me now. I'm going to try to hit him. Ooh, I'm going to assume that a 12 does not hit. Yeah, again, you clang your... What is the sword you have? Yeah. You clang your sword on the, the rocky surface of the gargoyle, and it doesn't have any effect. Okay. Miss, um, so. I'm going to do for now. Okay. No uh, bonus actions or movement. Not at this time. I'm still okay. kind of feeling it out. Okay, Dobby, you're up. Um, <clears throat> okay. I'm going to shift on over a little bit to get a better angle here. I want to have Hawkey fly over to Bear and uh, help out Bear with her request and cast Magical Weapon on her. Or him. Gotcha. Okay, Magic um, I'm Weapon. I'm also going to have uh, Hawkey provide aid to her next attack. Okay, so you administer the touch. Um, to magic weapon, and then aid on the next attack. And we're actually going to go right to top of the order again. Michelle, you're up. Bear. All right, sweet. So Bear uh, feels the, the magic of Dobby's presence slowly falling upon his little gnome shoulders. And Bear just goes like, ah. <laughs> And then, like, everything goes in slow-mo for a second. Okay. Now that I've said that out loud, time goes back to regular speed for Do for Bear. And Bear's going to uh, once again hop up, um, no running start, just straight up 10 feet into the air, um, and attack with the battle axe. So we have a plus four. Ooh, mm. for a 10, 10 to hit. No, unfortunately, you're not going to get the uh, that with a 10. Dobby, does it also increase the attack bonus by one? Uh, yes, it does, but okay, she does so... have advantage as well. Correct, from hockey. So you can roll again, and this time it'll be plus five instead of four. Oh, oh snap. 
16. That will hit. And this time, all the damage will go through because it's magical. It's a uh, plus one on the damage as well. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. So that's a D8 plus five with the rage as well. Okay. All right, so we're looking at eight damages. Okay, eight damage on the gargoyle you attacked last round. All right. And now Thank we go you. to the gargoyle's turn. All right. Let's see here. Uh, this gargoyle is going to circle around to the side. This one will... Yeah, you know what? It's going to stay for the time being. They're both going to stay on each of their individual uh, opponents, and they're going to attack with a bite and a claw. So for Steph, bite and claw. I think one of them... Nope, both are going to miss. With 19 was the highest, and you have a 20. Michelle, bite and claw on bear... 23 is going to hit, but an 11 is not. So the bite is going to get through your shield. It's only going to do four damage, though, Michelle, and you half that because of your uh, rage, so really only two damage. <laughs> I laugh in the face of danger. <laughs> They're going to spend their movement uh, flying up 30 feet in the air. So you both get attacks of opportunity on them if you'd like, but they are now 30 feet above you. Okay, I'm going to try an attack of opportunity on mine. Yep. Uh, that is a 9 plus 5, so 14. Not going to cut it. Very close, though. Bear? Do I still have Hoppy's aid? Blessing? No, it was only on the next attack. Yep. Gotcha, gotcha. A 16 does hit, though. Oh, I mean, well, that's kind of cheating. So it was supposed to be plus 4. Oh, no, you still get the plus from the magical weapon. You just don't get to advantage it from hockey. Oh. So it's still plus five. You're good. Yes, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so, yes, a 16 hits. And your damage? The damages. Let's see. What do we have? Okay, five. Plus Which... one more Six. from the yes. magic weapon, yeah. So I'm actually going to include that from the last turn because I don't think you did that. So minus oh, cool. seven I'll give you instead of minus five. Ooh. You do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the gargoyles fly up. We go to Steph and then Dobby. Oh, so they fly up 30 feet in the air? Correct. Darn Tell it. me you brought uh, your javelins. What? Tell me you brought your javelins. I did not... <sighs> I didn't think I needed a javelin for this nope. one. No darts? Um, oh, I do have a throwing axe. That... There you go. Um, what is the range on the throwing axe, though? Uh, it's not no, long. I'm sorry. I don't think it's... It, it might be... You'll, you'll be able to hit, I think, but you'll have to... Uh, yeah, it's 20 foot for no disadvantage. It's up to okay. 60 feet with disadvantage, so you're going to have disadvantage on this. Okay. Well, it's better than nothing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's let's try it. 20. Nope. I, oh, man. I rolled those two nat 20s, and it's all... It's all been downhill <laughs> That's it. since that. Yeah. But um, I miss. Okay. So, well, oh. you know what? There's always next round. Absolutely. And they you have move. to come at me. It's just a do warning you... shot. They have, to, they have to come get me. Come get me, guys. Come get me. Do you right. want to move? Um. Oh, yeah, because they are above me. I am actually going to move um, closer to Dobby. So, Because I know Bear can't get to Dobby right now. And I don't want Bear's rage aimed at me in case Dobby gets hurt. So okay. I'm moving right. towards him. To like shield them. I like Ella. Ella's a smart lady. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd say that. All right, and we go to Dobby. Let's finish around. All right, I'm going to let three magic missiles fly into uh, the gargoyle that's trying to fly away from Bear, trying to clip one of those wings to maybe knock it down a little step or two. Sure, go for it. How many? Uh, uh, what level are you casting this at? Uh, just level one. Okay, roll your damage. It's a nine damage on one of their 
fragile stone wings. Sure. Nine. Nine damage. This one is bloodied. I'll mark him. Okay. At the end of the round, unless you have anything else to do, Dobby. Nope. Uh, At the end of the round. I'll just have Pocky to aid, just like last time. That's it. Okay. That's fine. All right. Um, you know, this is a... You're in a, a graveyard, still. And underneath your feet, Dobby, you see or feel a hand reach out from underneath oh, no. the ground. And right next to you is a ghoul. And you're familiar with ghouls, because ah. last, last session in Supernatural 20, we fought a few ghouls, so these are similar. They don't have glowing green eyes like in the crypts of Azurum, but um, but they are ghouls. You can tell. Alright, everybody. Start of the next round. We go to the top of the order, Michelle. Alright, well, can can Bear just, like, sprint towards Dobby and attack the ghoul that, that uh, grabbed Dobby's ankle? Yeah. Okay, you could cool. you could you could reach it for sure. Yep. All right. Right cool. there. So so I'm just going to like really invade Dobby's personal space and just like wedge myself between him and the ghoul. All right. Just just to be clear. Yeah. And do you want to attack it? Oh, perfect. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, I'm not it doesn't mind it. Yeah, no, unfortunately ghoul is not going to be hit with a 9. How about a 10. How about a ten? <laughs> um, you're closer, but but unfortunately, no. The ghouls still need a little bit more. All right. Well, at least I like wedged myself like between Dobby and the ghoul, and so I'm just I'm just there as a bear. You've presented yourself as a better, or maybe the most obvious target. Yes, I'm like yeah. waving my arms and shouting and like screaming, and yeah, drawing attention. That works. All right. So then we go to uh, the gargoyles. The uh, gargoyles are actually going to fly over and land on the other side of both Ella and Dobby. Both of them are going to attack Dobby because they seem like Dobby's doing the most damage. So we'll have bites and claws on you, Dobby. Anything you'd like to do reaction-wise? Um, how many hits do we have? I believe we have two, but uh, your AC is what, 14 or 13? 16, with mage armor. Oh, and did you have that cast? Yeah, from earlier in the house, last eight hours. Oh, is any of them concentration, though, because you're casting uh, ma is magic it, weapon? Uh, magic weapon is, but I don't know if mage armor is concentrated. I don't think it's concentrated. Let me double, double check that for me. Yeah, it's just duration, eight hours, no concentration. Gotcha. Okay, so then you are 16. Yeah. That, so then only one will hit. It is a um, claw attack, which is the deadlier one. Okay. Um, I think I'll just uh, sit tight on that one and let it go through. Okay. You take six slashing damage, and you're going to need to give me a constitution saving throw for paralysis. Uh, seven. Seven. You're paralyzed. Um, for a minute. At the end of the round, you can make the saving throw again. Um, can I change that dice roll to a 15? You cannot. At, uh, you have to do that, I believe, after before the result of the attack, correct? No, with the divination dice. I think it's I have to roll it. For the check, I mean. My... Oh, for your, oh, for your uh, saving throw. Yeah. Sure, you could change that. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, so is it fifteen pass. Yep. So fifteen passes. It would be funny if I said no, it doesn't pass, but it does pass. <laughs> that wouldn't be funny. Be hilarious. <laughs> um, okay, so you're not paralyzed, but you are slashed for six uh, slashing damage. Okay. All right. We go to uh, we go to Steph. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, I totally rolled the wrong thing entirely here. I rolled the ghoul. I was attacking for the ghoul. 
I was supposed to be rolling for the gargoyles, so I apologize. That was a mistake. It's just six, six slashing damage, and it does not have paralysis. I was ghoul happy. I was ready for the ghouls. <laughs> so I get my 15 back. <laughs> you can take your you can take your 15 back. You get your your uh, portent back. As if everybody doesn't know, he's a divination wizard. So you can take that back. You still take the okay. six damage. No paralysis. That'll come at the end of this. Sweet. Dude, that or was not sweet. It won't come at the end. <laughs> well, I'm going to make their attacks separately because they have different attack values and everything. So, um, all right. Apologize, but the gargoyles are done. We go to Steph. What's Ella okay. doing? I am going to... Going to try to hit uh, the bloodied gargoyle because I can kind of see him closer. Yeah, you could reach. Uh, See. Oof. I'm rolling terrible. Um, that's a seven, so that's not gonna do anything. Yep. But um, I am gonna tr- can't really do much else. But I'm gonna try to take a bear tactic. I'm would, learning would a she lot still get bear. advantage for the next attack being on that gargoyle from hockey last round? This is the first attack on it. Yeah. Then yes. Mm-hmm. So what was that? I'm sorry. You get to re-roll um, it. Oh, okay. Get a three this time. Watch seven. <laughs> um, <laughs> so twelve. <laughs> Does not hit the gargoyle. Um, it's, no. It's gonna be my thing. I'm sorry, guys. I'm striking out, but I'm gonna take the bear tactic. I'm learning a lot from bear and just try to make a lot of noise to um, bring him to me too. Okay, <laughs> let's go, Ella. Step your game up. All right, we go to Dobby. Dobby, you're up. Um, all right, I'm going to... Hmm, I got two of these fellers on me, huh? Okay. So, Gargoyle's injured, and there's two next to them. Uh, I'm going to have to go ahead and cast my cantrip as it's splash on the gargoyle um, that's bloodied as well as the gargoyle next to it. Yeah, the acid one? Yeah. It's a dexterity save? Uh, yes, DC 14. Okay, they're gonna fail. Um, alright. So that'll be uh, four damage to each of them. Okay, so the acid wears away at the stone, uh, clearly unable to avoid it. Um, and I'll have Hockey continue to give aid to that bloody gargoyle. Okay. The ghouls are up next. Uh, this one, because as we said, Bear is the optimal target here, it's going to target Bear. Uh, this one does have a bite and a claw. We'll use the claw here. 17 bear. Ooh, that. I have an AC of 17. I will need a con saving throw from you. <laughs> okay. You're going to take <laughs> 8, so it halves to 4 uh, damage from the claw. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh, I have a 20 on the con save. 20 on con is good. You are not paralyzed. The uh, damage though you took was four, so just mark okay. that down. The okay, ghoul will stay where it is. The others are going to move. Five, ten, fifteen. Five, Ouch. ten, fifteen, twenty. And they'll kind of swarm you with their double move. The only one left to attack is the one in the north. So now you're the group is surrounded by four ghouls and two gargoyles. All right, here's the other ghoul attack on you, bear. Uh, nat one, so that's gonna miss. Um, but I that's. I do it for Dobby. Sorry. Yes. That is the end of the turn. So we go to the top again. Michelle, you're up. There. Oh. Right. <clears throat> I do it for Dobby. And I'm going to. Let's see. Yeah, I'll go ahead and swing my axe. Um. At whoever. I guess this one. The one that's adjacent to both me and Ella. Okay, accept. Um, 
So that's an 18 to hit. That'll do it. On the ghoul right here? Yes. Okay, go for it. Okay. I'm still raging, so I do okay. 9 damage on that ghoul. And then 9 damage. One more for the magic. Oh, 10 damage. <laughs> 10 damage. Yes. 10 damage. Got it. Thank you, Dobby. All hail, Dobby. <laughs> Alrighty. Still up, uh, Bear. Still up. But it oh. is a. You took a big gash out of it. I did my best. Hard to hear you. Move your mic a little bit closer. I did my best. There we go. You did your best. And the best may be enough. We gotta see. You gotta weather the storm here. We go to uh, the gargoyles. The one gargoyle is actually gonna attack Hockey this time. What? It sees what Hockey is doing. And what? doesn't like it. Hey, you know Dodge. what? Not attacking uh, any of you with this. And it was a crit. Ooh. So Hockey just took the crit. So you're <laughs> you're really lucky, honestly. Hockey just exploded into a puff of feathers. Yeah. So it, it's going to like fly no. up and take Hockey with it. It's going to strangle it. Then Hockey will dissipate into the air. So it's going up in the air. You can take an attack of opportunity on it, both uh, Steph and Andrew. Yes. Uh, I can't use a bow and arrow, can I? No, not with an attack of opportunity. Melee weapon. All right, quarter Steph it is. I'm going to bonk it on the head. Do you have it out? I don't think you have a Probably quarter not. Steph out. Yeah. So what do I do with my fists? Yeah, you could... Are you proficient? Well, I don't know if you have to be proficient with it or not. You could take a fist attack. Go ahead. You uh, miss. Don't hit. <laughs> you try to punch the gargoyle. Uh, but Steph, you can take an attack of opportunity. Oh no, I did, and I rolled a two. Oh my God, and Steph. I would. I, I'm really hoping that I roll into double digits ah. at some point. In this um, encounter. <laughs> this one gargoyle stays behind, and Ella, it's going to attack you. Uh, but it's going to miss an uh, 8 and a 17 on its attack, so <laughs> no problem. All right, we go to Steph. It's your turn, so maybe you can redeem yourself in this action. Oh boy. I just, I just want to roll in the double digits. Come on, man. Come on. Oh, I'm attacking the gargoyle. I'm sorry. <sighs> well, I rolled a 10, but that's a 15, and I don't know. <sighs> that will hit. Oh, it will. Okay, <gasps> great. You finally hit. Ella, you did it. Uh, and I'm actually going to use um, Divine Smite, too, when I hit with a melee weapon. Or do I have to announce that beforehand? No, I once won't. you hit. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to do that as well. Um, extra 2d8 radiant damage. So that's um, 3d8 plus something, something. Plus your uh, strength, yeah. Yeah. Something, something. All right, so I'm going to say that the first attack is the slashing, right? The first dice. That would be four. Yes. Yep, four. So four plus your strength of three? Three. All right, so seven, it's going to be half to uh, three. three. So you take so it takes three two. slashing. Yes, correct. Thank you for the math there. And 11 radiant, which is going to be full through. So 14 to this gargoyle. Great. Uh and then, uh, do you have any bonus actions or movement? Um, I don't, and I think movement-wise, I'm probably in the best position as as I can be. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's that's okay. what I got. All right. So, I'm okay, standing my ground. Otherwise, we go to Dobby. All right, in uh, a rage of sadness from hockey i'm gonna have to do my best to take on that gargoyle and i'm going to cast uh toll the dead on it as it flies away okay that would be a um wisdom yes a wisdom saving throw 14 it fails yeah fails all right so do your d12 Uh, ten. Nice. Ten. Uh, what type of damage is it? It's magical, obviously, but 
Necrotic. Necrotic, okay. The one that flew away, you said? The one that hurt Hockey? Yeah, the bloody guy. Okay, yep. So he's he's pretty uh, injured now as he's flying further away. He's flying towards the mausoleum. Um, do you have any other actions, Stabby, you'd like to do? Um, Just movement, but I don't think I want to move. Okay. So the uh, end of the round is gar- uh, the ghouls. The ghouls are going to make their attacks. We're going to do two... Yep, two claws on bear, two claws on uh, else, Ella. Let's go with those attacks. So the first one on bear. A 20 and a 7. Hits. And for Ella, your two attacks are a 11 and 9. So those are not going to hit. But bear, you're uh, going to take some damage from that claw with a 20 attack. And you're going to need another con saving throw. Okay, that's a plus four. Okay, so that's a nat 20. You're fine. Uh, no paralysis. Yeah, However, you do take seven slashing, so halves to three. Okay. I, like, okay. flex really hard. Yep. <laughs> At the end of the round, after all the flexing, uh, a figure stands atop the mausoleum. I'm going to place the creature just kind of out front at the gate because you won't be able to see it with the uh, with the lighting. But this creature is on top of the mausoleum, which is uh, at the very least 10 or 15 feet high. 30 feet high. No, it can't be. No, it doesn't say. So I'm going to say it's about 10 feet above the ground. This creature is standing on top, a clearly a undead creature, decomposing. It's uh, only item in its hand is a very ornate longbow that it takes off its back and then from a quiver draws an arrow and begins to knock it, aiming at you. Clearly this is Dorvath Harn, the the great hunter. And it looks like he's found his prey. I'm going to roll his initiative. He's going to join us this round. All right. He's going to be going at that position. Okay. We start with Michelle. Bear, what are you doing? Um, I'm going to lift up my shield, and I'm going to, like, kind of stand right by Dobby. Actually, can I hop up onto Dobby's shoulders? <laughs> Do I... Is there time enough to be like, hey, Dobby, can I sit on your shoulders and defend both of us with my giant shield? Um, what do you think? I don't think that would help because it would limit Dobby's mobility, I think. Ah, uh, fair. Okay. Well, then yeah, I. Gonna... We also have four ghouls and a gargoyle on us. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. I just feel like Bear would be blinded by the danger to Dobby. So, like, Bear would be prone to do something suboptimal, like, in a fit of passion. But I'm gonna. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, like, attack this. this the ghoul? Guy. Yes, that ghoul. The ghoul that was injured, gotcha. Mm-hmm. I will continue to hack away. I'm very frustrated at this ghoul. Okay. I just want to kill one of these. Oh, you hit. <laughs> oh, With that I roll, hit. yeah. I hit. All right, all right. And now I'm not going to forget the magic. And... Woo-hoo. Oh! Uh, speaking of magic, we do 13 damage here. That's going to kill that ghoul. Woo! Good job. You did it, Bear. Okay. <clears throat> yes, everything is cool. So Bear kills the first ghoul, the first uh, enemy down. Um, there's one less of these undead creatures grasping at your armor, Ella. All right. Okay. Great. So we go to the next is the gargoyles. So that one gargoyle is going to finish its flight back to Dorvath Harn, land next to him kind of sneering at the group, laughing that it's now out of, out of, uh, well, out of range of what it appears to be your weapons. And then the other gargoyle is going to move to attack Dobby. Urgh. Dobby, what's your uh, armor class? 16. 16. Okay, it's going to miss with its, uh, with its bite, claws. I don't know why I rolled it separately. I should roll using the stat. That's going to hit, though. 
22. What do you think um, That's the... This This isn't the guy that paralyzes, right? Nope, the gargoyle. Okay. All good. Eight slashing damage. Eight. Oof. It's not the only one... Uh, you guys aren't the only one that can roll max damage on its one dice. <laughs> okay. Now we go to... Uh, Harn. Harn the Hunter. He oh. is going to... Yeah, he's going to try to pick off somebody here. I'm going to roll a d3. Let's see here. Dobby, you are being chosen by the Hunter. Oh, no. Uh-oh. You've been chosen. I'm taking a beating here, guys. So... He... I'm so sorry. Am I it's in okay. any kind of cover here? Um, because he's perched up top, I'm going to say no. He's got a bird's eye view. Yes, he's going to use his longbow and uh, and try to pick you off, sniper style. That's going to hit. Oh, no. Uh, I will... Just because out of desperation here, I'm gonna cast shield to try and okay. block it. That brings you to 21, which is going to correct 21. Yeah, 21. That's going to stop the arrow. Uh, but you've now gained his interest. He looks at you, kind of puts his bow down, and looks at you, and then grabs for another arrow out of his quiver to to knock. He's he's gained my interest as well. All right, um, he's gonna shoot again. What? Yep. He's gonna shoot I still again. have shield up, so I'm good. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, don't speak too soon. He rolls a 19. Oh, I close. still have shield up. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> you are good. Close. It was very close. So Aww. both of these arrows uh, crash into uh, your invisible force field. That I you... glared him with a side-turned yeah. face. Like, did something just come at me and I hardly noticed? <laughs> wow. Okay. You're going to play it like that. Like... Bear's like clutching his chest and like having a hard time like standing. Yep. Yeah, I can tell. Oh. You're, this is killing Bear. All right. Poor Dobby. <laughs> we go to Steph. Okay. Um. I'm going to. That gargoyle is not bloodied yet, right? I'm Only sure. the one perched atop the mausoleum is. Okay. I'm going to try to hit this gargoyle again. He's still within my range. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nine. Stop. I am not doing great. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, that's what I got. I okay. So uh, nine right. does not hit the gargoyle. Movement bonus action. Can't yeah. hear you, Michelle. What? Oh, I was just telling Steph. You're trying your best. Yeah, um, I'm really sorry. If um, if roll twenty could let me change dice, I'd be changing dice like crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Physical dice, but would be... uh, but that's okay. I will kind of ready. And actually, in my action, can I try to lift my shield to give like partial cover to Dobby? So technically, no. But what I would say is okay. that uh, um, you you can still try to. You know, without making a check or anything, try to make yourself the obvious target. And I would say that with these ghouls, they would definitely try to attack the closest or the one that is obvious. They wouldn't, they're not as smart as the gargoyles or Harn. Okay. So if you want to be the one to be attacked, if you present yourself, they're going to go for you. Yeah, so I'm going to kind of do that the best I can. Try to like kick them in the shins or something to. Um, yeah. To okay. That's fair. So this, 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 uh, one will not try to move from you. It'll stay on, stay on you. Okay, so we go to Dobby next. Hmm. That you gargoyle got? over there is on the ground, right? No, perch atop the mausoleum. So it's 25 feet straight, and then how far it, would you say from me? I'd say 25 feet. I'm not going to do... Pythagorean theory. Oh, okay, okay, good, 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 good. Yes. <laughs> um, hmm. Are any of these guys injured around us? The gargoyle, I think? Yeah, the gargoyle is injured, and uh, 
Actually, both gargoyles are injured, but that's it. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with Toll the Dead and the gargoyle fighting us. Okay. It's a dex 14. It's going to succeed on Toll the Dead. Wisdom, you said, right? Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, it's Wisdom. Yeah, it's going to succeed with a 16. Oof. Okay. Um, um, anything else? Yeah, I'm going to move a little bit. Right there. Try and duck behind Bear for some cover. Okay, that works. We go to uh, the ghouls next. So, obviously, the two are going to attack uh, the ones that they're standing next to, which is Bear and Ella. So we'll go with the gargoyles. They're going to bites. One against Michelle. Two against Michelle. Claws against Michelle. The 20 is going to hit, I believe. Weave. Just a standard 20, not a critical hit. And All then right. against Steph, you've got... Uh, that's not what I want. Steph, a bite and a claw against you. Both are going to miss with a 7 and a 9. But, uh, Michelle, the 120 is going to hit you. For eight damage, which halves to four. All right, all right. How you doing? That. How you doing health wise? Uh, after taking four damage just now, I am currently at nineteen HP. I started at thirty-two. Okay. Alrighty. That's the end of the round. We go to the top of the order, which is uh, Michelle. You're up. All right. Cool. So then, I am going to attack. Oop. I'm going to attack this ghoul over here, the one that is closest to Dobby. Okay. That will hit with oh. a 13 because of the plus one as well. Oh, yes. Thank you. Lovely. That will All hit. Right. So um, then we are going to do eight damage to that ghoul. Sweet, and that's with the minus one dice. Okay. Yeah. Alright, um, that ghoul is uh, slashed. Am I able to, at this point, like, shove the ghoul out of the way? Can I, like... mm, no, you'd have to do that as your action. That would be Got a separate it. action if you'd like to do that. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Although you, you could try to, and you can grapple it, you can move it around if you'd like to. Um, you know, those are all separate than a regular weapon attack. If you want to try that next time, I'll try to remind you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Got it. Thank okay. you. Okay. And then uh, we go to the gargoyle's turn. This one is going to attack Dobby once more, and then it's going to fly away. So gargoyle will bite and claw you. I believe both of those are going to miss. And it's going to fly away. It's going to use 30 feet, 40 feet of its movement, 60 feet of its movement to get back and perch on top next to Dorvath Harn. Okay. Tax of opportunity from everyone, unless you don't have an, you know, a weapon out. Sorry, it wouldn't be everybody. It would be uh, Ella and and Dobby. 15? 14. They do both hit. Yeah. So, Dobby, you're just going to do a point of damage. Because it's a fist attack. But a point's a point. Okay. So and what do you do, Ella? So I've got eight. Um, I think that gets halved to four. The sword. Uh, eight, yep, four damage, yep. Okay. Alrighty. Then we go to the, uh, the hunter. The hunter himself. Harn knocks back another arrow. He's going to aim for Dobby. Let's go with a uh, longbow attack here. And after the first attack, which is a 19. Does he hit you? Uh, gonna go with the shield again. Mm, okay, he'll send the next longbow at you again. <laughs> this time a 22 and the shield is not gonna uh, save you. I'll change that to a 15. Wow, look at you. <laughs> Wow. That's so when you change it to a 15, he gets a 20. Yeah. Oh my Actually, gosh. sorry. 19. He changed okay. to a 19. Still good. Still good. Still good. I'm running low on the resources here, guys. Let's, yeah. Uh, step it up. <laughs> 
he he does he acts kind of like the uh, you know like the predator in in the movie the predator he's he kind of tilts his head like he's he's very very unsure of why he's not being able to hit you so he's really persistent now he's, I give him another over the shoulder glare he's ready to hit you all right we go to uh, Steph and then Dobby you're up okay come on guys we gotta hit I'm gonna go for the ghoul that's right in front of me okay this one okay that's a 21. That will do it, sure. That should definitely hit. Um, D8 plus three is seven damage. For that will that do it. Yep, seven. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of what I. Dobby, yeah. you're up. Um, I'm gonna keep going on that ghoul right in front of me with the yep. Toll the Dead. Okay. Toll the Dead. A 19 on the dice, so it's going to pass. Ugh. You run out of spells, uh, Dobby? Is that why you're using cantrips? Yeah, I only got one level one left, so... Oh, one God. <laughs> yeah, I got to okay. save it for another shield, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the Let's go to uh, the ghouls. We're going to have two on bear. They're wearing you down here. Um, I'm just being the tank. A 17, does that hit? It ties. That hits. And then 19 on uh, Steph. Not going to hit, right? Not going to hit. Man, that full plate armor was the best thing you bought. <laughs> yeah. They've been rolling like 19s all night. Um, okay, so Bear, you're going to hit with a claw for a total of uh, 8. So actually 4 slashing again. And I need a paralysis roll here, a con save. This is a lot. Your con is good. Yeah, it's a plus four. 18. 18, that will be good enough. So you stave off the paralysis one more round. We go to the top right. here. Um, this time at the top of the round, Horn is going to kind of point towards Dobby, and the gargoyles are going to set off to fly towards him. Um, although it's start of the turn, it's Michelle. Sweet, sweet. Okay, so I'm going to slash. I'm going to put my back into it. I'm going to slash at that one. Okay. Um, nice. 19 to hit. Actually, a 20, but yes, you hit. <sighs> Thank you. I'll remember that plus one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then 12 damage on this wow. ghoul right here. This, uh, this fool or this ghoul? Oh. Same oh. thing. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even. That he's was good, he's was hanging good. on by a thread, almost literally. Like his his stomach is cut open. You've hacked and slashed at him so much. He's still standing, though. Okay. Yeah, my face is like, it's just frozen like this right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. And then we go to... Uh, the gargoyles turn so they're gonna fly 60 feet down one two three four five six they're gonna land on side of dobby okay that's where they land and they're both gonna attack you dobby bites claws bites claws and i missed a bite so i'll do another bite all right dobby one's a crit 16 10 and six <sighs> Uh, what can I do here? So they all miss except for that crit. You're right. out of portent, 16, I believe. But you're out of your portent, correct? I think my shield is still going. All right, until my next turn. No, because you had a turn um, after Harn last time. Oh, I did. Yeah. All right. So then the one hits normally, and then the one crit. Um, I have an 18 portent dice left, and I have one oh, spell right. slot left. Yep. So you could make that not a crit. I could make that not a crit. Or and save then... it. Or what? Or save it. I'm going to die here if I don't. I just haven't helped. Okay, Wait, so you're going to... Um, so, here's what I'm going to do. 
I am going to use another shield because I believe that guy goes before me, right? The archer. He does. Yep. He'll go next. Yeah. So I'm going to go with the shield, my last okay. level one spell. And I'm going to have to change that crit to a normal 18. So it's just wow. a normal, normal hit. And uh, let's wow. see. I'll take the gamble. We'll get less than seven damage here. <laughs> So you change it to an 18, which changes it to a 22 in total to attack. It'll, it'll still hit, but not a crit. Right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to roll the damage here. It's going to be a D6 plus 2. Okay. I don't know what just happened. Oh, because it thought it was a crit. Okay. So I'm going to take the first number then instead, like we normally do. So the damage was 4. Okay. So the first oh, damage four? is 4. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so you take four health. slashing from the from the gargoyle. The, you're lucky, actually. It rolled a it rolled a one. Actually, no. It should only it should only be three because it rolled a one. Yeah, it's counting it as if it uh, uh, it hit and did a crit. Okay, so I have so four health. Left yeah. There. Yep. You okay. have it. It did three in total with the slashing okay. damage. So that was pretty effective. You you change it from being a a decent attack from being a total of nine to being three. Nine would okay. have killed me. <laughs> yep. And you have a AC of 21 for the rest of the round. Harn is yep. going to go next and he's going to target you with his longbow. So we'll do him. And uh, he's going to shoot twice. First one, six. Second one, six. All right. Well, you didn't even need shield, but. Well. <laughs> Better safe than sorry, I guess. Okay. I'm weak. This is a lot. <laughs> I'm okay. getting bombarded. That would help. All right. Well, that's the end of uh, the enemies there, Steph and then Dobby. Um, I have a, I have a quick question. Um, I should have asked this in the beginning. Can I do Word of Radiance as a bonus action since I'm just speaking a word? Do you know that cantrip? Um... No, okay. tell me what it does. Um, word of Radiance. It, it, it says, at will, utter divine word and burning radiance erupts from you. Each creature of your choice you can see within range must succeed a constitution saving throw or take 1d6 radiant damage. I see. Yep. That is uh, an action. You can do it right now on your turn. Action. Okay. Yep. Um, actually, I think I'm going to do... Thing. Sorry. Yeah, so basically that would work on everything. It would work on every ghoul, it would work on every gargoyle and harn. Yeah, I actually I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, it's only a five foot radius though. What right. actually yeah, you're right, it's five feet, so it would be like everything in in melee range with you. So at the very best, if you stood here, you'd get those three creatures. Yeah, no, I think I'm gonna I'm just gonna try to hit this gargoyle, and maybe I'll actually hit something this time. Okay. Cause the thing is real hard. You can do it. No, I can't. The twelve this is, is not gonna cut dumb. it. Everyone, um, you know, this doesn't look good. Uh, you know what? I I'm also just realized that uh, you told uh, what's her name to go with you, and we did not include her in this combat. Uh, oh yeah. Madrina. Yeah. What has she been doing? <laughs> What is well, she this whole doing? time I had invisibility cast on her. Well, she it's funny you say that. It's funny you say that uh, this whole time. You, she was so stealthy that you didn't realize that she now runs out of the mausoleum holding the saddle of the hunter. You gotta go. <laughs> so she's holding the saddle and she says, I have it, I have it. And then she looks up and sees Harn there with his longbow aiming at Dobby. He now looks down at her and aims it at her. Oh no! So, uh, we'll we'll include her in the next round, but she's here, as I planned all along. <laughs> See, everybody, when you're a great DM like I am, you have these things planned well in advance. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, there she is. She's she's right below Maharn, who's uh, standing on top of the mausoleum. She comes out of the mausoleum. She must have snuck in through. An opening in the back. All right, top of the order here. Actually, no. Wait, did I skip somebody? I skipped Dobby and the ghouls. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, 
Not that I have much left, but... Right. Let's, what's the range on invisibility now that this new... I believe it's touch. Is it touch? If it's touch, that would suck. I think it's touch. Um, yeah, creature you touch. Oh, okay. And so requires just, concentration to, just to be clear here, that guy's attention is not on me anymore? Seemingly. <laughs> Seemingly. I see. I see. Okay. Um, what would a 15 foot cone look like from where I am at the moment? Um, it would look pretty cool. <laughs> Who are you trying to get in the cone, though? As much as I can without killing everybody. So if you were to take a step back, I believe if you were in this corner right here, you could hit this. But I would take two opportunity attacks. You would, yeah. If you were to take one step back to just take the ghoul and you stand like here then you could attack I'm going to make this a better color here because I can't really see here if you were to attack you could get this you could if you stood here oh. uh, alright I think I'm surrounded by gargoyles and a ghoul. I got four health. I'm going to have to use a tactical invisibility on myself. Ooh. Okay. Uh, do you have a spell left for that? I have one level two spell left. Okay. So you uh, are yeah. out of spells now, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, cantrips, obviously, but... Out okay. of spells. And then, All right. Um, so if I'm move? invisible, I can, I can move without taking... Yeah. Go ahead. Um, Where do is you there any move? cover in the local vicinity here? There's some tombstones. Okay, I'm gonna take cover behind a tombstone. Okay. Are you? Is the plan to retreat back to the to the gravesite? Uh, the plan is to get out of the triple flanking attack of these <laughs> monsters, okay. and then right. provide covering fire for the retreat. Okay, so the ghouls are going to attack next. They'll go on bear. Claw, claw. And on uh, Steph. So the ghouls are going to get a 17 and a 13 on bear. And on Steph, on minutes. Ella, we've got a 6. So bear, does that 17 it? Yes, sir, it ties. All right, 7 slashing, so it goes to 3. And then give me a con save. Hmm. That's going to do it. You're good. All right. I'm down to 12 HP. 12 is low. Use your potion. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, Bob, when I picked up that potion in that chest earlier... Hard to hear you, Michelle. When I picked up the potion in the chest earlier, yep. was it was it a potion that is clearly used for health-restoring purposes? You don't know. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well then, I'm just I'm just gonna chill. Can I like attack in response, like a reaction? Um, drinking it is the action, though, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Well, so you could I, I... you could take a a risk and drink it. I can do um. I can do lay on hands in combat, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's in action. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I my you're first good. time playing Paladin. No, you're good. It's in action. You can heal up to 15, <laughs> I believe. Yeah, I, I have 15. So if you can, if you can make it to me, we're next to each other. I'll hold your you're hand. You're next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm gonna like wiggle my back up against Ella. Like I'm gonna just like wiggle backwards so we're back to back. And then I'm going to be like, all right, I'll get your back if you got mine. And then I'll, like, kind of just ready up attacks. Can I do that? Yeah, you can You can attack if you'd like, and then 
get healed by her when, she, when it's her turn. Okay, cool. Then I'll attack um, this gargoyle. This one that's like, been injured? Oh, yeah. Remember, oh, he's okay, hanging on by a thread. Mm-hmm. Yes, the one hanging on by the thread. Thank you. Oh, a t- 21. Solid, you got him. All right, cool. And then we have 13 damage. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. I sever the last thread. It's like, <laughs> oh, that's so satisfying. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, we're going to go with the Were Raven next. She's going to run straight ahead, and she's going to say, back to the gravesite. You don't got to tell me twice, lady. All right. Then we go to the gargoyles. The gargoyles are being commanded to attack her. They fly away, so uh, Steph and Bear, you get an attack of opportunity on each of them. Nice. Put them in the order that they were in, so Bear will hit the one that's bloodied. Can't hit anything. I got 14 on both. Unfortunately, they fail. I don't know why I'm rolling so terribly. You are rolling terribly. And Bear, you're going to miss too, I think. Yeah, I got a yeah. 1 and uh, and a 13. Okay, so you miss, and uh, Steph misses. Yep, they, they get away clear. They're going to attack the were-raven. Um, let's see here. I think this Gargoyles. is the first and last time I ever play Ella. <laughs> Cutting her off after this session. Oh no, our raven friend is not doing so good. She's going to get hit twice. <laughs> One's a crit. She's going to end up taking 12 damage and five. So it's a total of 17 damage. She's bloodied. Dude, this is like the worst episode of Scooby-Doo. Like, <laughs> I feel like we just failed as the gang. The uh, the hunter is going to shoot his longbow at her twice. Oh, no. He's going to hit twice. What do you mean? Doing... She doesn't have any cool spells or shields to protect herself? No, and they really... <laughs> well, I'll talk more about this at the end, but they kind of screwed over the were-raven, I think, a little bit in, in some regard here, but we'll, uh, we'll talk about that later. So, 18 damage. She's down. She <laughs> so drops bad this... So this were-raven die. <laughs> She's down. She drops this uh, large saddle on the floor of an invisible Dobby, and perhaps? Dobby yeah you're invisible and you're hiding behind a tombstone and the saddle slides <laughs> right in front of you huh? all right we go to Steph you're up okay uh, <laughs> all I can really do is I'm gonna do lay on hands on bear um, so because I can't hit anything, clearly. I'm surrounded by things that I can't hit. Fair um, enough. like... Eight... Is hands a bonus action? It's an action. No, it's, it's an, an action. action. So that'd be my whole action. Um, you think eight eight hit points? That'd be like half the hit points that I have sure. in reserve. So... There you get eight. Ooh, oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Hello. And, um, movement stuff? Oh, yeah. Um, I move... I'm gonna move... To the important thingy. Here? I'm gonna move here, so there's no attack of opportunity. I'm right here next to them. Sure. Um, and I'm gonna try... Because I don't know where Dobby is, because he is invisible, but, like, try to... Pick up the saddle? What? Do you want to pick up the saddle? Um, I don't know. I think that's another action. By the time I get over there, lay on hands and get over there. Okay. I don't know if I can grab it, but I'm going to get try to get in between the gargoyle and the saddle. That's fine. Yeah, so you kind of try to to get in position to pick it up. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Then we go to Dobby. Hmm. Okay. Uh, do I have any space behind me at the moment? Uh, yeah, it's the rest. So behind you would be like 30 feet back would be like the, uh, the, the tombstone that you were at. Um, would picking up the tombstone or the 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 saddle be my action? Um, technically, I don't know. I don't know if picking up an item off the floor is an action or not. Let me see. 
I always forget it, because there's you have a free action. And I always forget if like what's allowed or what's not. If something's like in your bag or something that uh D Beyond says actions in combat include attack, cast a spell, dash, disengage, dodge, grapple, help, hide, improvise, ready, search, shove, use an object. Does not take an action. Okay. So you could. In fact, Steph, you could have picked it up if you'd like to. Oh. Um I don't know if I would have. Okay, so then Dobby, you're open to doing it. Yeah. Yeah, because I've got a shield and a sword. There's That's true. You don't have a hand. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, I would like to pick it up. Okay. And move back the 30 feet next to the... You said there's a crypt that we came in from? Uh, you came in through the, the, the tomb. You came up from the ground, remember? You were in the, in the, grave. In the burial site. Yeah, in the grave. Okay, so it's like a trench. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to grab the saddle jump in the trench for some cover and blast that come out of invisibility and blast that bastard gargoyle that killed hockey okay. with a uh, um, uh, told the dead okay I'll roll for it a one so it's gonna it's gonna hit it do your damage Oh, one right back at you. <laughs> well, you're able to still duck in the hole. Um, and then we go to the ghoul's turn. Not sure what happened to everybody, but my uh, audio is a little uh, cut out a little bit there. So uh, what we're going to do is if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll probably see that it's a uh, edited video. So we, we got rid of all of that, um, the dead air. So let's uh, finish it up here because I think the plan was basically to run away, correct? Well, when you put it like that, it doesn't sound like a very strong plan. No, but it might be the only chance of survival. Now, Dobby is already in the crypt. He's already in the grave, I should say. Um, and by that, I don't mean dead. I mean, he's literally hiding in the grave that you dug. I'm not hiding. It's to a get tactical here. position. Tactically <laughs> positioned. Using it for cover. Thank you. Um, now, the last thing here was, Steph, you were hit by one of the ghouls. So if they paralyzed you, that would be a problem. Yes. But if they don't paralyze you, I would say that you could disengage and get into the to the grave site. So roll your saving throw against paralysis. Okay. You said that's wisdom? No, constitution. Constitution, sorry. Ever a time to roll well. Oh god. This is it. <laughs> no pressure. Uh. Eight plus three. Plus three is eleven. That is oh, good god. enough. That is good enough. Okay. So, Harn takes some some pot shots at you, leaving, but ultimately, the group is able to run back to the gravesite. Mist covers over the uh, the grave, and Am finally, I able to grab the um the were raven's body? I mean, they're a bird. They're light. I can grab that and go, right? Unfortunately, all the gargoyles have now descended upon the body. <sighs> They're not going to allow you to take it freely. Okay. Can I throw so, one more spell out before I run? Sure. I'm going to blast that stupid cargoyle. Okay. With what? All right. Well, I only have cantrips, so wisdom safe. Go. Just to see <laughs> if you can kill him. One, not one. Aha. Take that. A he's still not dead, I'm, but I'm not he's, three. <laughs> he's still not destroyed, ah. but he's he's hurt. So you wake up the next. Uh, so actually, you when you wake up, it's the next day. It's dawn, and I'm gonna just switch the music over here because it's not appropriate. There we go. So you wake up in the next morning, and it's dawn. And in fact, you wake up and you're covered in um, dirt. Was that all a dream, guys? Like, I'm really just hoping that was a nightmare. Well, you wake up and you're oh, covered dear. in dirt, so I don't know how much of a dream it was, but you are literally covered. It's hard to breathe. You need oh. to give me an athletics check if you want to get out of this. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. Of what? What do we have? You're buried <laughs> we, six we feet under. We're buried alive. <laughs> we're buried? You're buried six feet under. Those uh, stupid birds 17. covered us with dirt. Oh, man. What'd you get, uh, Seth? Uh, 17. That'll be enough. So you're able to spend a minute or so just burrowing through the loose ground, picking yourself up, and you gasp for air when you ascend to the top. Same with Dobby and Bear. Cool. Yeah. I didn't want to go out like that. <laughs> so there are were ravens uh, that come out from the house when they hear your gasps, and they say, oh my god, we thought you didn't make it, so we dug the hole back up. Thanks a lot. I We didn't yeah. know. We, we, we thought you we were all lost. Where is Madrina? Lost. <laughs> Unfortunately, Madrina gave her life to... Dobby, please tell me you have the saddle. Please just tell me you have the saddle. Just get the saddle, the saddle for you. Of course I It's right here. <laughs> yeah, so you, yeah, so you bring the saddle up to sight, and uh, they are all relieved, all three remaining were-ravens. And um, they say that Madrina sacrificed herself for a good cause, and uh, we know that this will be safe at your keep in the library. Yes, it will. Um, so, at this point, the Were Ravens are going to ask that one request um, that no one comes back to Chalet Brantifex. This is a secret hideout where they store um, items that they find from time to time. While they can trust you, they don't. They aren't so sure that they can trust anyone. I think you gotta tell your raven friends not to drop books in people's laps, you know? Like, that, that, that's what got us here. I don't believe that was one of us. I mean, but I can promise that I'm never coming back to be buried alive. Yeah, this was uncomfortable for me. I, I probably will not return for a while. What was it like <laughs> fighting on the other side? It's terrible. I couldn't hit anything. They uh, so cursed bad. me, man. It was I was cursed. I was cursed the whole time. They just it was like death by a thousand cuts. They just kept attacking and attacking and attacking. <laughs> they do have bad aim though. <laughs> I don't know. Not everybody has a twenty one AC every turn. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, the Were Ravens are gonna bid you farewell, and uh, you head back to Candlekeep with the saddle in tow. Um, that is gonna conclude the Book of the Raven. Um, I will. I feel like I do want to debrief it just just for a few minutes. I know it's midnight on the East Coast here, and we're the technical delays kind of brought us to uh, a little later than we wanted to, but. Um, I do want to just really quick answer any questions you had and talk a little bit about the uh, the Were Raven. So I mentioned they kind of got gypped a little bit. The Were Raven stat block in here, they are no longer like just a lycanthrope. They don't have immunity to like non magical weapons and stuff like that. They now get a regeneration, which is cool. Uh, but if they take damage from silvered weapons or something like that, then they don't get the regeneration. I don't know if this is something that Wizards is doing in the future where they wanted to make lycanthropes a little bit more... I don't know, it's kind of weird that they're just immune to all damage, basically. So, maybe that's the way they're changing it in the future. Um, but I I do feel like, th when you brought up the idea, like, you know, why aren't you all going with us, these were-ravens? I guess there's really no good reason. They probably should be able to all go with you. So I said one of them could go. Um, but yeah, so those were, I guess, some of the confusion areas that I, that I saw in this in this chapter here what did you think of the book though i thought it was it was confusing when we were in the um in the manor on where to like look and what to do mm -hmm. because it didn't seem like there's anything um and we missed the whole third floor because we ran yeah. down for for the screaming which i don't know if that's what they were playing if we went up to the third floor if there'd be more there if yeah so that's anything. a good question yeah, the, I feel like the, uh, the we went, they would make the noise somewhere else to right. make us go. Exactly. The were ravens have a, a mimicry ability, so they can mimic sounds, kind of like a kanku. And they decided to they whenever 
if since they had they don't really get visitors here, um, they try to scare you away with the sounds, make it seem like it's haunted. I think there's a wizard spell that's similar, a cantrip or something. It makes like a noise. Yeah, like thaumaturgy or uh, prestidigitation. Yeah, I think yeah. that one. Yeah. So they do stuff like that where they, it's not magical though. So they're just making the sounds and uh, they try to scare you away. But um, but once once they feel like they could trust you, then they tell you about the shadow fell crossing. So, but I agree with you. There's a lot of exploration, and some of it is, you know, the third floor stuff that you might have missed. Just so we can have some closure here, there is a nursery up top in the attic where there is an actual specter, uh, so a ghost that will attack you, because um, the you can tell you kind of got glimpses of it. The house actually is haunted, um, like the the well where the spirit. Yeah, I there thought there would be more about the well. That, yeah, that the, seemed like the focal point the baron yeah, maybe that's just the supernatural 20 in us though who keeps going yeah, that's true. for no reason the that's baron true. of the house <laughs> the baron of the house accidentally killed himself sleptwalk after the death of his dog and fell into the well and drowned so you uh you had the uh picture the portrait of his wife if you were to bring that up to his uh the third floor there's a room you could put it in his soul will go to rest but that was basically it that was basically it. And then uh, some of the other third floor stuff, there's like storage, attic, the, the uh, what should we call it? The were ravens actually had some pretty powerful artifacts. If you um, were to explore that room that was blown up, you if you had realized that those are the were ravens, if they approached then, if you were quiet or stealthy and stuck up on them, you would have caught them discussing stuff. And they have some artifacts in there like, a Orcus figurine that could be used to summon an avatar of the that god. So they have some other artifacts there that they hide. Um, oh, yeah. those are them, like in the room. Yeah, of the room you're in. Yep. Oh, okay. So anyway, wow. stuff like that, little things that weren't like inter integral to the story, because the whole point is for you to find the Shadowfell crossing. Um, they're just some small little other quirky things that you could have found on the third floor and fight a ghost. So. Yeah, I, I feel like we we missed a lot in the shadow realm too because we only got about thirty feet, and then we <laughs> we were bombarded. Well, to be fair, the the mausoleum is small. It's only a, it's like a thirty foot by thirty foot thing. So if you go okay. in, there's the saddle in there, and if you defeat them all, you would just get it and then bring it back. So, okay. you know, luckily I had planned that that were raven was going to be hiding stealthily, going inside and getting the saddle. That I was, was actually thinking about doing that myself since I was so close to death. Used invisibility to just run that ahead, grab it, and run away. That might but not then I didn't bad. know. Yeah. If they could like detect me at all, I'd be totally screwed. True. I was thinking I would like, you know, do a lot of taunting and attract the attention of all the enemies, so then like you guys could like figure something out that was sneaky. Yeah, the kind of the fight starts as soon as you approach the mausoleum, so you really didn't have time to plan once you got to the other side. But um, I think you did well. I mean, you held off the the creatures for quite some time, and um, Dobby got brutalized. But <laughs> you know, I feel so bad I couldn't hit anything. Next time, Next they couldn't time. hit you though. So <laughs> anyway, we're gonna call it here. That's the end of the stream. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm gonna continue doing more of these. Candlekeep Mysteries next week on Friday, the 2nd of April. We're going to be uh, going to be streaming the 16th level adventure, Xanthoria. So that should be interesting. Um, and if you would like to check out any of the Supernatural playlists, which is a whole bunch of community one-shots and old dungeon magazines, pretty much any one-shot I can get my hands on that is a horror theme, uh, we're going to run it. So that's, that is, I'll put the playlist down below in the description. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe button if you haven't done so already. All right, everyone. We'll see you on the tabletop. Good night. Good night. Bye.